we're on the air. Hello, everybody. We're here with the live chat of Tar Baby. I'm here with, introduce yourselves. My name is Mathis Bailey. I'm the author of Confused Spice. Next, we have I'm Michael. Tatiana from the Tati. <laughs> okay, and then we have Michael <laughs> from Michael Reads. Yes, okay. I'm Michael from Michael Reads. All right, so let's just get started with a simple uh, overall idea. So what did you guys think of Tar Baby? And is it the first time you've read Tar Baby? This is the first time I've read it. This is only my second Morrison read, and I loved it. But it took until I got to the end of, like, I liked it as I was reading it for the dynamic between the characters and the things that it just revealed in the characters as thought pieces, so to speak. But it, when I got to the end, it was like everything just clicked together and I understood it and I felt smart. <laughs> and then I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> but when I got to the end, it was like everything okay, just sorry. clicked together. Okay. All right, who's next? I can go Mathis, go ahead. Oh, okay. So uh, for me, it was a good read. I I enjoyed it for the most part. Um, the first, uh, it took me a while to get into it, which is, I think that's all Toni Morrison novels that it takes me a while to get into it. Um, I feel like it had like a slow start. The intro, the, the uh, what you call it, not the pre prelog, but the foreword, that was confusing for me because it really didn't have like a connection to the story. So she mm. kind of tripped me on that part because it just didn't have a connection. I feel like it was like a separate story. That, the forward though, um, from what I understand is, cause I read, I read this years ago and it didn't have that forward mm -hmm. in it. Oh, so okay. if you have a really older version, it doesn't have that. The forward is fairly new. Oh, okay. I, I, I'm going to agree with you on that. I was a little confused by that forward. I'm not a fan of reading forwards before books because I just feel like they spoil somehow. In this case, I was just confused. So I just, I read the forward. I, 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 I I'm sorry, go ahead, Mathis. Oh, it didn't read like a forward. It read like a prologue. It, yeah, I, I agree. Yeah, I agree. I agree with that. That's exactly right. I don't know yeah. what confused most of the people reading the novels. Like, okay, well, how this connects to the exactly to the forward. So I yeah. think the forward is dealing with Toni Morrison per se and her, mm -hmm. you know, her mm -hmm. her personal story. Her, yeah. her, her about telling stories to her grandma. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so that's yeah. why I was the only one who asked her to tell stories. Yeah. yeah. So that's yeah. why. So yeah, mm. but yeah, I enjoyed I enjoyed it for the most part. You enjoyed it for the most part. Okay, this is not my first time reading. I read it like I said years ago in college, and I remember it sparking some pretty, um, pretty lively, uh, you know, discussion. Um, but it, it it's a book that's very layered in its presentation. So, you know, there's a, a lot. She's saying a lot in so few pages because it's, it's it's dense. Let's just put it that way. It's a dense one. Although I think it's one of the one of the books that's the most linear in the way the, the, story, the story is told. Is because yeah, because yes. most Tony Morrison's they're like puzzles, you know. So you you know you you get your border then you get a clump here and a clump there, and then you're trying to put it all together. By the end of the book, it, it, it puts itself into place. Whereas this is much more of like, it reads like a linear story, even though some things aren't told outright um, the way we expect, you, you, they're inferred, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it's enough for you to you know, understand what's going on. But yeah, I liked it. I think I liked it even more the second reading than I did the first one. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Um, Michael, what do you think? Oh, um, 
Well, I did a review on it, so go check that out. And I refused <laughs> to watch your review until after we did this live show. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't. I didn't. I, I'm sorry, I didn't watch your review yet because I was I'm like Tatiana. I was like, I needed to, you know, get my thoughts together. But um, I, I did like it. Um, it's what it was. If it was, it was my third Morrison read. Let's say. Mm -hmm. But I did, I did like it. Um, yeah, I, I liked it. <laughs> you liked it. Okay. <laughs> we'll talk about it. We'll talk about All it. All right. Okay. Let me just throw out some, some questions. Um, let's talk about the significance of the title Tar Baby. <laughs> so, I mean, let's just throw it out there because some people may or may not know or may have not come to the conclusion that I don't know. I haven't, you know, do you, do you under do, do you understand? This it's from the Briar Rabbit. Briar Rabbit. Yeah. Briar Rabbit. I've never known how to pronounce yeah, it. Yeah, Briar Rabbit, yeah, story. Okay. Yeah. And I, did y'all know that story? I have not. I, I remember I mean, it from I remember it from as a child. Childhood. Yeah. yeah. And it's the story because I used to get Briar Rabbit and Peter Rabbit mixed up when I was a kid. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Briar Rabbit and is it this fox? They have like an a rivalry between each other, and mm, so right. the fox decides that it's going to put this, it's going to make this doll out of mm -hmm. tar to get Briar Rabbit's attention. And what mm -hmm. happens is Briar Rabbit comes hopping down the road, and he sees the doll, and he goes to talk to the doll, and it's a doll and so the doll mm. doesn't respond so he goes to, mm. I think first he kicks it and then his foot yeah. gets stuck yeah. and then he goes to take his foot out of it and then his hands get stuck mm. and then dumbass decides I'm really really mad so I'm gonna headbutt you and then his hands yeah. Yeah, and so in into the tar and like one of the things that tar does, and my granddaddy actually explained this to me when I was a kid. One of the things tar does is once it gets in you and you're moving in it, it can move up. Yeah, it like okay. it, it it can move up on its own. I don't know what just happened outside, but it was loud. Um, and so it's like moving. It can it's get, getting him more and more sucked into this tar this tar baby, and. Mm -hmm the fox comes out of hiding after like sitting and hiding and laughing at Briar Rabbit while this is happening and they have this little dialogue and it ends with uh, the fox throwing Briar Rabbit into this patch with thorns and that's how Briar Rabbit gets out of the tar baby because the thorns provide something for him else to, something else for him to hold on to to get out of the tar. Out of the yeah the tar. And yeah and he was in like he runs off and he says I was born in a in a thorn patch or whatever it was called. You you know mm -hmm. I would I would never get taken in by that. So so the 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 scene I think in in the book that that kind of gives a mirror of that story is the scene where Sun is um, confronting um, Andy, uh, not Andy, Jadeen. Jadeen, and I think it's right at the beginning where he confronts her and he makes her feel dirty. Yeah makes her feel really dirty and he's really mean to her. And I think that's, that's one of the beginning mirrors of this whole idea of the tar baby idea is in that scene. Mm -hmm. um, and then you have the second scene is uh, further on when uh, they run out of gas and, and she actually gets stuck in the tar. She gets yes. stuck in this yeah. gooky stuff behind this tree and yeah so that's the second image that is brought up i think in the book that is supposed to you know give you this image of the tar baby kind of thing um okay so let's let's talk a little bit about the characters so we have let's start with sun what did y'all think of sun creepy ass mother yeah the fucker <laughs> There's, there's no, mm -hmm. he was exceptionally creepy. Yeah, he was. Like, I couldn't, and because 
of course, being the reader and having this omniscient view mm. of everything that took place, it what it like created a mental block for me as far as having an issue with the fact that he, that son and Jadine are having this romantic relationship. Boom, he was watching you sleep and you didn't know he was there. And that shit's yeah, that's creepy. creepy. And I'm like, no. Yeah. <laughs> it's very creepy. It's oh. it's a very it's very creepy. And the thing is, is that she's you know that he's creepy right from the beginning. Mm-hmm. Because you look at the first, I think it's like the first um, parts where he jumps off the boat and then the way it describes him going through the water, it's almost like the blackness of his skin and the darkness of the water are one. There's this description, it's very, um, how do you say, primal, this description. And it, it, it conjures up these ideas of, um, yeah, like, like primal instinct and feeling and um, things that are, something that's gonna get unleashed. This is the kind of image that you get in the very first few pages. So we don't know his name, but he's already, um, you know, uh, something that we, someone that we fear. We're not sure why, but we fear him. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right. And then what about Jadine? Hold on, Michael. I want I want to hit Michael and Katie. Um, yes. And, uh, yeah. Yes. Go Kay, ahead. Uh, Kay on the chat also said that uh, she likes Sun also. I liked him as a character also. Um, was he creepy in the beginning? Yes. But as the yeah. story moved on, I grown to like like him also um and Didi, did you read sula yeah i it that's interesting because in sula there is mention of a character named tar mm. baby mm-hmm. yeah yeah and um did you think that was sun i see this is the thing i think that it 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 starts it's supposed to make reference to Sun. That's what because, because in Sula, they're supposed to be slightly linked. Those yeah, stories in, in Sula, if that is Sun, he has mm. a different role. And it's funny because when after I was reading Su- as I was reading Sula, and they mentioned Tar Baby, mm. um, I I thought I remember while reading Tar Baby that there is a mention of what Tar Baby and Sula what is mentioned in Tar Baby, what he did in, well, it's called The Bottom in Stula. That's yeah. Right, right. right. Yeah, that's, that's right. Mm. And I was just like, are these the same people then? And well, this is the re- thing. Re- I'm going to have to reread Stula because it's been yeah. so long. Same here. There is a mentioning of the, the, the fact that they're supposed to be slightly linked or, or a similar link, that link um, is, is supposed to be there. Mm-hmm. Um, a loose, let's say a loose link. Yeah, um, okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, between the but, stories, I and I, like, I wanted. Oh, go ahead. I wanted to be Team Sun. Like as I'm you read, not as you read the the story. If if it were not for the romantic involvement, as you read the story, team, you know, Sun and Jadine as um, friends or acquaintances for what he introduced into her life about bringing her some. Mm a deeper understanding of herself and what she was ignoring uh, as as far as the community around her, the black community Uh, around uh. her. I think that was great. That romantic entanglement just jacked it all up. Yeah, it was a mess. It was a mess. Because I think he became more and more manipulative uh as the story went on. The moment he was cleaned up, he became worse than he was when he was he was 30. Yeah. Hello? All right, that's just me. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> it ain't, it ain't anyway. what were you gonna say, um, Mathis? Well, for me, I, I disagree with both of you guys. Um, for me, I think Tony Morrison wanted to be a, wanted him to be charming and attractive to the reader. Um, he, I, don't, I didn't feel like he was like all right creepy. I know that he did creepy things in the novel. <laughs> <laughs> He wasn't was creepy was, enough for you. Unbeknownst <laughs> to Jadine, she did not know he was she he was snooping and watch 
as she was being, you know, when she slapped. So, yes, he was creepy. However, um, there was some type of charm to um, to son that you want to know more about him. And the way she, the way she, uh, um, Tony Morrissey described son, it almost became almost kind of animal, animalistic sex. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, I was kind of intrigued by the way she described him. You know, the way yeah. he was built, his dreadlocks, how strong his dreadlocks were, <laughs> you know, the strong features. You know, I was, you know, you know, I was to know more about them. And so, um, you know, I didn't feel, I didn't, I was not put off by him at the beginning of the novel. Now, when he grabbed Jadine in her, in her room, you know, I was like, oh, wow, he's, he's crazy. And thrust his build against her back. Like, but, yeah, exactly. Yeah, he was, shit. No. He was, but he was attracted to her. <laughs> He was attracted. He was strongly but attracted you don't to this force woman. Your attraction onto the person that you're attracted yeah. to. Like I'm attracted to you, so I'm gonna just take that. Shit. I'm gonna just take no, that. I think people. I, however, I think people are reading too much into that scene because he, she. Oh. Remember, uh, Jadine attacked him because you know he was she was he was talking about you know you must suck dick on the side or something because you. Um, you know, to get ahead of life, you know, being a model and everything like that. He was she like, smacked, how do you become a model? She smacked him. So if he yeah, had not her him. ass to the ground. Exactly. Yes, but no, you don't hold her by her back and rub your dick against no, her. Yeah. He, did not <laughs> rub. That's, that's he did not rub. <laughs> he, he did not rub. His his penis got hard as he as he trying to hold her tight from hitting so him. It was just, it was yeah, a, okay. Okay. We know what that means, okay? We know what that means. <laughs> was he, you know, was he wrong for that? I don't know. This is, this yeah. Is what I'm this is what I was looking now, forward to. So. But wait, but wait. You see, but this is what happened in my college class is that you had team son and team not son, okay? <laughs> this is what happened in class. We're all fighting over, you know, this kind of thing. But, you know, but, my thing is, I expected a romance. I felt it, like, when I, he first entered the Well, of course scene. you feel it. You feel it. I mean, I'm not going to say no. Yeah, of course you feel it. But there's something else that you didn't, that you probably not. Yeah, I don't, I don't yeah, know. I don't think, think it was a romance. I think it was a possession. It can be considered more like a possession, but there's another yeah. thing you didn't take in consideration is that if you notice in the book, all of the kind of beautiful people in the book have mm -hmm. some type of power over other characters yes. in the book. Yeah. yeah. And it's their beauty is what gives them this power over the other one. So you have, to take, you have to take that in, into consideration as well, even though it's true, son is whack. Um, <laughs> you have to take that in consideration as well, because that is the thing that, that, that draws the two, because they're both beautiful people. Except you have son who's trying to exert his, because you've got two people that are completely different. You've got uh -huh. Jadine is this modern city girl, money, the glitz, the glamour. That's what, that's the kind of life that she's used to living. And then you've got son. He is naturistic. He is linked to the earth, if you want. He's a country boy. It, completely different. He's he holds Under values that are different. But the thing is, is that it's it's he's trying to force her to think, or like he's thinking, to to be more like what he's what what he's thinking and feeling. And it you know it's never going to work because you know they they've lived their lives so differently. So I mean you know it's 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 not going to work. That it's going to be a failure. But yeah. You know. I can see where you're coming from, Dee Dee, but you can also look at what he was trying to do is, um, I wouldn't say force, but like make Jadine almost see a different side of the, like- He hung her out of a window. He hung her out of a freaking window. I don't, I don't think Michael's there yet. I think Michael is just at where they were, you know, like telling, in informing Jadine that Yardman's name was Gideon. And yeah, Mary's yeah. name is Therese yeah. or Teresa yeah. or Therese, however, however you say. I think that's where that's that's where Michael's at. We're I get it. 
Yeah, he did that in the beginning, but then he had to get he had to get extreme measures when she wasn't conforming. <laughs> so he got more extreme as he wasn't conform as she wasn't conforming. On the chat, they're saying um, the people who are who who can, son? like son, well, who who is okay with son. Arlene says that's what I like about son, the different world he introduced her to, mm-hmm. and then mm-hmm. someone a uh, K said I like about that I like that about him too, but that relationship was toxic, and then uh, Arlene hello yes, hello yes I'm not denying that it was definitely mm-hmm. toxic. Arlene also says um, there's level to these there's levels to this creep. So Exactly. There's that. Exactly. Yes. He's yeah. you know he's and I, a and piece that's of what, I think it would they would have been much and it may it it may have been because you know I'm I'm not an I am not i am not a Tony aficionado. It may have been the same kind of toxicity if they were just acquaintances or became mm-hmm companions without the highly emotional and sexual interaction. Mm. It may have had mm. the same the same amount of toxicity. But mm. I think that being added to it, and again, that's why I, I, I see it as a possession because it's like, I want you, but I want mm. you from both of them. I want you to be what I want you to be. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Oh, Although he's attracted to her the way she is. Yes. Yes. Yeah. It's like make up your mind, dude. What do what you is, want? What do you want? Do you want? Do you, you can't. You can't. Ha- oh, that's. Oh, okay. Wait. Let me let that sit <laughs> for a second. You it's like you can't, can't have for exactly what they are, and then say, exactly, and then like. change them. Yeah, and they want him to change, like you know. Well, you know. It was the other way around too, because mm-hmm. uh, she, Jardine, she wanted also son to believe what she believed. Uh, Absolutely. Believe. So, yeah, but she wasn't so strong about it in the sense where she wasn't going to hang him out a window or anything weird like that. She just well, wanted she to have because, some... because of her small stature. Exactly. I, don't, I truly I don't, don't remember him hanging on her, hang her outside the window. Y'all yeah, he does because people. the police even knock on their door. They, the police even knock on their door yeah. because somebody called and said the man was hanging a woman out the window. Oh, this is where, y'all talk about the scene where he started and putting when, his hands on her? When they're in New place. York. Yeah, oh, when they're in yeah, New York. Not, of course. I mean, she got good enough sense to leave him after that. Yeah, I know. I would leave him. Was, it was like, you t- it took <laughs> that much of a straw. Like, the whole... <laughs> Oh Jesus, Pete! It took that much of a straw. It, yeah, it took. But again, she how like we don't know what kind of relationships. Didi, you live in France. Our relationships. <laughs> <in France? laughs> uh, uh, look. Uh, uh, with, um, all I can tell you is my man don't play them kind of games, honey. That ain't how he operates. So. Even if he tried, he would fail. <laughs> nah, that ain't gonna work. Mm-mm. No, also, we, we don't. Before they hooked up, so I'm pretty sure she was turned on by that too. No, she never yeah. knew that he was what? Wait, she was listening to her what? No, he was sucking on her foot at the beach. You remember he was oh. like, he got this, yeah. up, this foot fetish, and he was like, "Can I suck on your feet and touch your feet?" And she was like, "For well, what?" And she was like, "Yeah." But she got- never said no. When I'm sitting here reading, yeah. like, no, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Tatiana. You know, she was getting that done with her man overseas, so somebody else had to do it. So I'm sure. Uh, for sure. So he was pulling on the moves on her. So yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. He was That's definitely the reason pulling why she the ran away. away. That's the reason why she ran away with him because you know she was he had her sprung out. That's how I looked at it. Yeah, I yeah, think I also she this was just another series of flings in another right. you know and all the yeah. other men that she's had because she's supposed to be yeah. very attractive she's a model he's so a bad boy. He had many men I he also was a bad boy was the opportunity for her to be to for her to flake because i don't think she had any situations where tension arose and she stayed in place yeah when yeah. the ten, with the with the you know the black, the dark skinned woman in France, as stuck as she was, her response to that was coming mm-hmm. was coming to the island. Yeah, yeah. So this, so it's like this is 
and this is a difficult situation. I need to get out of this situation. You want to come? Exactly. Yeah. She's very good at, you know, um, running away from difficulty, you know, not really, um, not really dealing with whatever <laughs> is going on. Michael. Let's run. What did I think run. about the supermarket scene when she, uh, when she picked up three eggs and she took it to the register and uh, they looked at her like she was crazy? What did y'all think about that? The whole scene. <laughs> That's the one where I, that's the one where you see how oblivious she really is. How how she 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 moves through the world on her own terms without really thinking about other people. And this comes back over and over again concerning Jadine. Um, that's that's why she can be considered as a very unlikable character because she doesn't seem to have any attachment to anyone in particular, not even to the black couple that she considers her aunt and uncle that have been taking care of her. She, she would, normally she should think of them as her surrogate parents. parents. And she doesn't even think of them as that. They she just thinks of them as some accessories, some, mm -hmm. some black people that are in this house taking care of these white people that haven't been paying my education. It, it doesn't go any further than that, you know? So. The egg scene in, in the shop that just shows you to the depths of stupidity that Jadine has, certainly concerning Black people in particular. Right. And I, I think, and it took, again, after thinking back on it, I, part of me thinks that what the lady, the dark-skinned lady saw in Jadine mm. in that instance in the market is what Sun saw in Jadine yeah. when he called her white. Yeah. 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 Mm. I think so, too. It's, um... It shows a good side of Sun. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the only side. side. <laughs> that's the only good side. Yeah. Um... Um, and what you think about the whole, you know, she left gold tracks on the on the floor at the market as she left out the um, at the supermarket. What should I think about the gold tracks? What does that symbolize? Uh, is that was her? It was that her self worth, her dignity, her pride. She was leaving behind in the supermarket as she got disrespected by the cashier. Um, say that again. I, you're talking about the dark skin. It said the dark skin woman left so, left gold tracks, right? Yeah, Jardine. Jardine yeah. left gold tracks. Jardine, I think, is oh, the one that leaves. Jardine. I think it's Jardine that leaves the tracks. Yeah, she leaves those tracks on the on the floor as she as she walked in and walked out of the supermarket. However, um, the gold tracks didn't follow her, follow her out of the supermarket because she got disrespected by the African cashier, which she's Bit towards her, yeah, yeah. So I feel like she made her feel stupid because she went in there uh, with a with a lot of pride because she was a supermodel and she was living in Paris. She had this beautiful uh, white fiance. You know, she was living it up. Then when she got to this, she didn't understand why people were looking at her so weird. She, I guess yeah. she, people were looking at her because her complexion or whatever. Yeah, and also her hair because her hair is quite flowy and mm -hmm. and all of this. See, there's a double, that, that's the next thing I was going to ask you guys is, because it has a lot to do with this, these kinds of scenes, is that there, I think there's a double Me. thing going on there. There's the idea that we're seeing that, you know, the callousness of Jadine, but at the same time, we're seeing the way Black people deal with each other in different situations. And... You in most of the different scenes, you have this contradictory thing. You have these two themes are fighting with each other. It's either race, um, or you're you're fighting between um, between um, oh god, I can't even think of what it is now. Colorism, colorism, race, and um, um, class. That's, that's, that's what I thought you were going. I didn't want to you, 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 you have this duality between race or class. So the question would be, which one 
is more important in the book? Is it more race? Is it more class? Yeah, it's the it's the woman with wow. the eggs. It's the woman with the eggs who leaves the gold tracks. It's the woman with the eggs that leave the gold tracks. Yeah. Yeah. She she said um she do, 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 she swallowed it. I'm talking about the cashier. She swallowed and was about to try again when the woman reached into the pocket of her yellow dress and put a ten Louis piece on the counter and walked away. Away, gold track in the floor and leaving them all behind. Left arm yeah. folded over her waist, right hand holding three chalk white eggs in the air. And what will she do with her hands when she reaches the door? They wondered. Yeah, yeah, because she's obviously not behaving like she should behave. Right, she's behaving like she wants to behave. She's not taking into consideration what is expected of her in this particular environment. So and it's I just think, that's just her way of showing us what she's really like. Uh, Toni Morrison. Yeah, this is a dark skinned woman, not Jadine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So here again, you have this 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 thing between the fact that Jadine doesn't look like anybody else in that mm -hmm. in in that supermarket situation. So she's almost being singled out because of that. So here you have again this difference of class, but also. Um, you have this colorism thing going on at the same time in the, in that particular scene. Yeah. Um, yeah. So which one do you think is more important, class or race? Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, I know. Because <laughs> when I saw the question, I thought about it for quite some time, and I was like, mm, I don't really know. It seems like I a, yeah. a toss-up. It's to very much a toss-up. Let me write that down. I, 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 I oh that's a which one is more important class mm -hmm. or race yeah important in the book or like which one is more important in the book so which one is you think is you know the one that is more um prevalent or uh, much more um oh in the book yeah no, in the book definitely class yeah you don't yeah. think so yeah I, so. I would say class. I would say class. Oh, um, in yeah, book. in the in book. book. Yeah, in the book. Yeah. In real life. Oh, no, in real life, no. Uh, we're not going yeah, there. We ain't got that much life, time. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, um, it's class. It's class. Okay, so we all agree class. Mattis, yeah. you agree class? Yes, I agree class. Yeah, okay, good. So everybody agrees class. All right, now, speaking of class, let's go to Valerian and Margaret. Oh, Jesus. What you think about them? I love, like, the, a, a good number of these tabs in this book are mm -hmm. arguments. Yeah, yeah. I, and I, don't, and I don't know what that says about me. I found myself enjoying, even though they were so prevalent, I found myself enjoying the arguments that took place between mm. all of the characters, but particularly because that's how we're really introduced yep. to Valerian mm. and Margaret is with them having this huge, you know, this huge argument. And it's just like, how is this how you all talk to each other? <laughs> well, the thing is, I think, I think those are some of the best dialogues. The dialogues are bomb in this book. I, agree. I mean, you you learn a lot about the characters through these dialogues. I mean, it's amazing what she's put in work she put in with on these dialogues. Because we get introduced to Valerian and he's just a real asshole. I mean, mm -hmm. he's this guy, here again, another manipulator. He's manipulating every freaking body in yes. the house. Everybody. Yep. He, you don't know his wife doesn't know why he wants to stay there so he's got her on the touch with you know are they going to stay are they going to go oh no but she um, leaves him she, she leaves him she comes and visits him for her. she has, she, she, she don't know visit. what's going on with her husband um then you got you know he's got the the, the what is it the the butler and the cook got them they're on the touch as well oh yeah oh, man it's just the 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 tension mm -hmm. right from the beginning is enough to break your back. It's just just that the tension is horrible. And then when you but add its, its son to the mix, 
Oh yeah, it's really good. And then when you add sun to the mix, it just yeah. gets worse. It yeah. just gets worse. Yeah, I feel like actually between Bell Bellerin and his wife Margaret, I feel like the love between them has faded away between mm -hmm. them because um, oh. they were sleeping. They were sleeping in separate rooms. Yeah, separate rooms. Yeah, but I don't. I don't think I, I agree with you, Mathis. But mm -hmm. I don't think that their relationship started out of love because when you have this no. whole no. discussion, like this whole sharing of how Valerian first sees her and he sees mm. this exquisite beauty. I think that's another relationship that was more about possession on the side of Valerian yeah. because he wanted this, like he and he put in his mind how he wanted things yeah. to happen. He took over yeah. the family business and I'm going to retire by this age. And mm. so this, you know, this is, this is what I want to happen. Going to do it. I saw her. She was pretty. Out. Yeah. And I'm going to have her. Yeah. 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 That's true. Her and Margaret was young when, uh, she was she saw Valerian. She was only seventeen years old. When yeah, she was very young. So he can't. He kind of, I guess, you know, he could manipulate her. the cradle. You yes. Yeah. And yeah. kind of manipulate her and control her. And she, not only that, she was kind of. I think she was wanting to get out of her family because no one really yeah. there, was there with you know growing up for her. Yeah. You know, no one in the house to raise her. It didn't seem like it. But it's also keep in mind it's because a lot of people envied her beauty. Yes. Yeah. And she was a she was why, a queen. Yeah, and this is why nobody wanted to either people didn't want to be friends with her, they didn't want to have anything to do with her. She was pretty much on her own. So for her, her only way out of that mess was to, you know, get she married. Exactly. And and so it seemed like she was infatuated how much money he had too. Yes. So that too. Yeah, yeah that too. Yeah. She maybe wasn't the best, um, they weren't the best for each other. Yeah. So they're, they're actually, not the best yeah. No, just they're married for the wrong reasons. Let's just put it that way. Yeah. Um, and it's because when when you said okay, they got. I think he he saw her first when she was seventeen, and then when we learn about the abuse of the son. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The Christmas and dinner. She, she she tries to blame that on on Dean. On I was like, now how are you going to blame that on Aunt Dean? Because you should have said something. Really? Because you were older than me. You were 35. She said, bitch, I was 23. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> I was 19. I was like, wow. And, that's, that's, and again, that's another class. That's another class. It is. Because Margaret saw Aunt Dean as servant. And so yeah. as servant, you must, be, you must be older than I am. You're not as pretty, apparently, as I am. Yeah, exactly. So you, you, you're showing your age more so. Than, and so you, and you, should, you should have checked me when I was abusing my... 15 years older than me. Yeah. Right. About, the, about Margaret, though, I feel like her character was a little, it was a little vague for me. Toni Morrison really didn't explain where that violence came from. She didn't... It's, Explain where why she was abuse why she was abusing her son. Where did that come from? She crazy. Well, you, she, but, you <laughs> could, but you could see when she talked about the abuse, she talked about the abuse as wanting to have her child's total attention. Mm -hmm. And that wow. was and and it was a method of control for her. Exactly. Because yeah. she wanted to see if she because she wanted to didn't she say something about wanting to see what it looked like to make him bleed or something like that. Yeah, Did yeah. <laughs> something, she says something to that effect that it, it, this is nothing more than a control thing. And you can see that all the way through the book because mm -hmm. when she's talking about her son coming to stay with them on the island, she's talking about, oh, I'm going to go back to New York. I'm going to stay near him. And then, She's saying all this and it just sounds crazy once you know that she's actually been, that she abused her son all through, you know, the, when he was young. And you and hear her talking about him now. Amends, but that's not how you make amends. Like, no, you, you can't make amends. To see you because no. you did this. So basically, he is, he's not only, Michael is not only not wanting to see his mother, he doesn't want to see his father either. Because his father his wasn't smart enough to figure out that yep. he was being abused. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You know, know, so, you know, the both of them is whack. I mean, yeah. this is like, How really whack. You know that your son was being a, a, abused by the mother. Because he, was he wasn't hiding, He was hiding in a, in, a, in a bathroom cabinet all the time. Like, yeah, yeah, well, this is what I said, too. It's like, who, what parent comes home and sees their kid in a bathroom cabinet and thinks that's and normal? 
no exactly. questions. No questions. It's yeah, like but he wasn't, they could be he wasn't that there. Playing. He wanted to have a son. Yeah. He wanted to have a son. He finally got a son. And it's again, now I have what I it's that tick mark off on his list of things that he wanted to have. Yeah. He has somebody that he can leave yeah. his legacy to. I got that on to the next thing. It, it's not that he yeah. had any value or Michael had any you know, purpose in Valeria's life other than being his son that he had that yeah. now he has a legacy. I got somebody to carry on my name. Which is kind of sad because that just basically tells you that he was a very bad dad. Like he wasn't really doing anything with his son. And and he knew that she wasn't doing anything with him either. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I don't know how they thought this kid was going to grow up and they shouldn't be too surprised when they doesn't come around for Christmas or, or anything, anything for that matter, you know, <laughs> anything. so, um, yeah, I mean, Valerian is really quite the, quite the character though, because she's built as this sort of, you know, he inherited the business, the candy is named after him. Uh, he's got the beautiful wife. He's got, you know, this, you know, house on an island where there's only like 20 other people living there. He seems like he has it all, but at the same time, he seems like he's ruminating over all of the, um, what do they call them? Like these untold or unmentioned things, like him not realizing that his son was abused, the way he doesn't like want to openly say that his wife has probably got Alzheimer's or on the uh -huh. verge of having it. Uh -huh. You know, it's all these things that are just that are, that are happening that 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 they're not talking about. You know, he's ruminating over all of that. And it's, and it's amazing to me that you can be in relationships with the like they've been in relationship with each other, Margaret and Valerian, Andine and Sydney, Andine, mm. Sydney and Valerian, and then Margaret mm. into the mix. And all of you, mm. all of them have been in this relationship for this long period of time, and none of them know how to communicate with each other. No. No. And, and it's only until Sun shows up, though, that everything bursts, the bubble it's like, bursts. It's, it's the straw that breaks yeah. the camel's back. The camel's back, back. exactly. Because, like, before it was like the household under this pressure bubble or something and then when sun is entered into the mix it it, it explodes mm -hmm. and is this the same guy y'all calling a creep and just <laughs> he he was a creep. Creep. he's not no, a creep. He's a creep. He's a creep but i feel like he brought everybody into reality i feel like he saw he made people look into themselves and in, in their problems you know he was and the I, I agree with that but yeah but keep in mind what you're not realizing Mathis is this man <laughs> drove his, his car <laughs> this man drove his car into a house because he Stop. came home and found his lady exactly exactly I mean I don't gonna offend that this I mean, man is violent okay yeah. he hangs women out windows he drives cars into people's houses the man is violent okay well, look, so <laughs> well, look everybody in the novel has has flaws Oh, oh fuck yeah, a flaw is a flaw, but, but the man is freaking dangerous. <laughs> but none of this <laughs> that's just getting beat up on sun, like you know, like down, you know, this man had problems. Of course, everybody has issues. I mean, like Margaret, who she was abusing her son. So she was also the villain. So Absolutely. you know, and she crazy. I, I said she crazy. So yeah, Margaret is kind of crazy. She's but she's got issues. Margaret is crazy. Jadine is self absorbed selfish, and aloof, oblivious. Yeah, aloof. Un yeah, aloof and a selfish. Bitch. I mean, you got people like she doesn't see. Yes, you're a servant, but so are yeah. Gideon and so are Teresa, and you treat them like they're below yeah. you because and, it's like and that then house and slave, there's still slave mentality. They all, yeah. they all absolutely have issues, but they're just because they're good. They're good attributes to the story what they add to the story don't take away the fact that yeah. they have no issues. They're, yeah. they're crazy creepy yeah. classic yeah. nasty rude ignorant yeah. they still got those I still, even though even though son you know had his issues i mean strong issues i still sympathize with him because people looked at him the wrong way because he was this tall Tall man, you know, with strong features and dreadlocks and all, and dirty. Yeah. You know, this is hiding in the house. Who was hiding inside their house for a whole week? In the house, like in the, you didn't 
wasn't just this ain't just you going into the cellar to well, sell chocolate. You he was walk honest. He was a runaway. He was running away from the law. So he was honest about it. I mean, I mean, what else he should have hired? Okay, okay, man. Okay. It's not like he said, oh, okay, I'm a lawyer and I'm hiding in the closet. He just told him straight up, you know. This is exactly what happened in college. So this is exactly said, what happened in college. Because I was hungry. Homeboy is hungry, so he had to eat. And I can, so, I can understand again. So I why did he just knock on the damn door and ask for some the food? To steal some chocolate. You don't walk your yeah. ass up three flights or two flights of steps. You don't walk from the cellar to the kitchen, from the kitchen to the upstairs, and into a closet. You didn't know whose closet it was, but into somebody's closet, and you're squatting in that shit, waiting for the house to fall asleep so that you can walk <laughs> your ass out to get back to Janine's bedroom and sit and watch her sleep. Oh, my God. That is so freaking creepy. <laughs> he was infatuated with her. What can I say about that? You know. Oh, jeez, Louise. Just because you're to somebody does not give you carte blanche to just do whatever the be fuck creepy. you do. Be creepy. I don't know that, though. He didn't have to do all of that. Don't be stalkerish now. The stalkerishness has got to stop now. <laughs> all right. I agree, Jocelyn. Okay. I think Toni Morrison has kind of like a thing for son. I don't know why she... You didn't like me use the word neurotic. I think the things were neurotic when they came to son. Like for example, when he when he went in her bathroom and took a shower, and you know he squeezed her um her sponge, Rubbed her sponge all over his oh, body. You know? And then she let she, she he like also let the soap go down his face and everything. He was like, this he was like the taste taste so familiar. The soap and. You know, he said it was milky and stuff like that. I was like, you know, that's very neurotic the way she's describing the shower scene. She I like, wouldn't say it's neurotic. Oh. What I think it is is that she's showing the break between the naturistic, basic man, filthy, in the dirt, naturistic, primal. She's showing that rupture between that physical aspect to something that looks like what they're used to looking at, like the people that are in this house. So he's shedding a little bit of that, but not completely. He's basically being pretending so to be like them. Shower. Yeah, he could have done it in Valerian shower. He could have done it in anybody's shower as far yeah, as that. He's gonna do it in it's just the idea that he's doing it. He's doing it so that he can fit in, but he's not shedding who he really is as a person. That's just the front. That's his mm -hmm. that's just the physical thing. That's just him getting cleaned up. I mean, the same thing with the hair. There's a lot of images in here about about hair. No, I think I think he was just horny <laughs> inside her room because in, in the scene, I'm not gonna read. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna find a, a part in his book forever. He went into her room and mm -hmm. he was going through her stuff, whatever. And she described there was a couple of spots on his pajamas. So I assume that he was having an erection before he went to the shower room. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, that's what she said. There were two spots be on his uh, pajamas bottom. So I assume that he was having an erection. Then he went to the bathroom and starts, you know, looking at her um, smelling goods and stuff like that. And he took a shower, you know, thinking about her and you know, so I just feel like he was just being a horny guy stalking her. So um, yeah, well, it could be, but being that it's Toni Morrison, it probably ain't just that because she don't do nothing light. Is it? Yeah, she never had. Just she ain't wasting her time on no erotic scene for nothing. Oh like, no, it's gonna no. mean I something. Watched, I watched Toni Morrison um, videos, and she has a quite a sense of humor. So oh, yeah. she does. You know, the yeah, she she really writes, it can be very eloquent and very uh, layered. However, I feel like there's a little bit of um, comedic in her writing in, in, a, in a sense, because she was not really a serious person. You know, she, you know, she's, you know, she's a good orator, but she's, um, she, there's a fun side of her. A really fun yeah, she does have, she has a good sense of humor. Yeah, so I Absolutely. think you know. I think some people like to read read a lot, a lot into her work, but they also a, a really soft side of Toni Morrison. I feel in her writing, and it just, sometimes you just gotta see it as it is when you read her work. Well, I I think you can say his her her, her interpretation of his family when he goes back to that town called Elode or whatever it's called, yeah. that little Hello. small town. 
that was pretty comical at in some parts um, yeah. because you know it was just sort of like for real <laughs> do you see your people you know he's got her staying there while he goes to his dad's house over there no, and then also staying there Jadine, she was very uncomfortable i don't know if she feel like that I'm like, yeah, she's sleeping in a room with no damn window come on yeah, now it's a very uncomfortable situation when you are like used to like this is what i imagined the house is at elo looking like looking like the first house mm. i wish i could show a picture of but I, it's on my phone the first house that my grandfather built when mm -hmm. he and my grandma got married like the like square you know mm -hmm. box box houses just placed you know here and there around the community but it's still even though the houses aren't close together it's a close-knit community yeah of you know of people and so it's like everybody has this idea of what is and what isn't appropriate and if something goes wrong at somebody yeah. somebody's house ain't much like she's staying at um, at the house with son and his daddy, they only got one room. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that, yeah. That kind of situation. So that level of propriety that son doesn't care about, but everybody else yeah. in the community cares about. Oh, and so nobody I, wants son, nobody wants to be sleep in the same she room. In Valerian's house, so yeah. That's you know she's not used to being in close quarters with people, and then having this um, standard of propriety. Yeah thrust upon her so I, I if i coming from where she know i would have been uncomfortable too i would have been uncomfortable if, if i, if I, I would have put me in a room with no damn window and it's hot as hades yeah mm -hmm. um, yeah. Okay. Nah. <laughs> yeah i yeah. think the dean was just being um prejudiced and i also think she was um I also feel like she was being very judgmental of people when she went to the small country. She was, yeah. But they were being, but the they were being judgmental as well. Yeah. Well, they were being judgmental as well. Crazy too, like a Sadidi, you know, black girl. But yeah, but um, keep in mind, Mathis, they were being judgmental to her as well. Mm -hmm. I agree. I agree with that. The, ju the judgment was on both ends. Was on both you, know, sides. So, you felt it. Yeah. You, That's the, the class the thing. Class. Yeah. 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 That yeah. goes back to that classes versus classism versus race situation. Mm. She just couldn't wait to get out of there. And yeah, I, I, I might, I think I might, I might skip in ahead, but I don't want to forget. We all over the place. So, J D, so at this, L, when she was living at the LO, I think mm -hmm. that's the name of the place, right? She was mm -hmm. having these images where she saw all these women surrounded around her. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Women. And so I think that's magical, uh, uh, magical realism that Toni Morrison liked to do. Like, yeah. And so um, it was all women, all the women she she knew. Well, except for uh, son's mother, she showed mm -hmm. up in the room as it goes. And you know her mother was there. You know all, all the her grandmother was there. So she know she saw all these women and she was like scared. Like she didn't understand why all these you know would you be operations. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. If my mother was deceased. I would be scared. I'd be like, hey, yeah. But know? keep in mind, you're talking no. about somebody that doesn't really have a family and doesn't have a connection to her. She family. has no connection to family. Yeah. Well, why, so why, for why, her, that well, that feels like it's suffocating. Her, if it's not for her, if she can't, immediately yeah. See the benefit to her. She thinks it's something that's happening against her. So yeah, she and sees all of these women. She thinks that they're coming to uh, like she's done something wrong, which she has. But she thinks yeah. they're coming against her, not yeah. possibly helping, trying to help her get to a certain point. It's not until she actually leaves Sun and goes yeah. back to the island that she gets some kind of internal resolution. It's a suffocating. It. It's a suffocating experience mm -hmm, for her. Mm -hmm, yeah. Come, because you have to imagine it's the room. Those all bearing their breasts out at her. That was really freaked her out when it was all bearing their Yeah, breasts. well, you know and why? Because she's clearly not made to be a mother. Yeah, uh, the, I, the, I got, I got wet nurse vibes from that. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. And you have the wet nurse thing twice in the book, because you have the other woman. What's her name? Um, Therese. The, yeah, she was a wet nurse. Mm -hmm. yeah. And she's been put out of business because now there's, you know, powdered milk, you know, so and she she was one that was like, oh, oh you know, they put me yeah. out of business, 
because, you know, uh, I was the one who was, you know, feeding all these babies. I had, I always had milk, you know, kind of thing. So you, that image, that strong kids. image of motherhood. Oh, yeah. Okay. okay. So, motherhood that Jadine is never going to be. Okay. Right. And, no. And she's, and That's she's not that. If That's she experienced it, she doesn't remember it. So, in Diddy, since you mentioned about motherhood, do you mm -hmm. think, I think Jadine is pregnant when she was on that airplane. Why do you think that? Why do you think that? Let's turn. Um, yes, let's turn give me a minute. Tell you me what the page to turn to. So in this last part, she's on the airplane, and the the point of view switches, and right here. Where you Where you at? What page you at? On my copy, it's two ninety. It's the last paragraph before the last part where she's on the airplane, and she looks down, and they're talking about ants. Oh, okay, yeah. And it says on there. Straight ahead, they marched shamelessly single-minded for soldier ants to have no time of dreaming. Almost all of them are women. So, so uh, blah, 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 blah. And then there's this part where it says um, about, like, the queen and her main point is just having kids. Oh, Michael, you make me uh, sick. I'm going to have to hold on. Wait, let me, Mike, wait. Let me relook at this. Because Wait, you said page 290? It's at the end of the chapter? It's at, no, it's, it's, on, it's on page 290. The paragraph starts with the plane lifted itself gracefully over the island. Yeah. Oh, okay, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I see you. Because I wrote on my notes when I was taking it down, I, I was like, is she pregnant? Because I, I also want to talk about like the end end too, because that part brought me like questions about that's what where I got it. huh that's that's where I, that's where i feel like i got it but yeah that that last part i really want to talk about that because i was just like oh okay but this that that passage about ants and about like um it's almost like the queen is well yeah obviously the queen is the center of it all yeah yeah and yeah, she's yeah. the one that gets that makes the baby. So I was like, is she? Oh, Arlene thought um, she was pregnant too. See, I wasn't crazy then. But I was like, is she pregnant? So that's Well, it does say, then she begins her journey searching for suitable place to build her kingdom. Yeah, so if she is- Falls into the hollow of a tree, examines its walls. Of... Yeah, okay. So I was just like, is she? But I thought that was just like one of my things that I was like, is she? But, but I don't know. <laughs> oh, gosh. Yeah, that's that's a possibility. I didn't think about that when I read it. I I I'm not either. sure what I was thinking when I read that part. I just thought that that was just another... And that then, was, it, it felt like to me that part was more this idea of now things are going back into order. Yes. Like, like things are coming full circle, like back to nature, back yes. to the old, same old, same old. That's what I was thinking. I didn't necessarily think she was pregnant, but I thought it was this, this, yeah, this throwback of this is nature back to business, back to the way things should be. Okay. Uh, it's what this thing was supposed to be, but I could be wrong. And I didn't think about the pregnancy and, you know, you could be right. I don't know. I didn't think about it like that. I didn't think about it like that either. That's This is my note. <laughs> is Jadine <laughs> pregnant? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was just like, Arlene, no, it's not a bad idea. I mean, she is too, but I, yeah, I, you're right, Arlene. Yeah, I think she is pregnant because even the parts where it's like about, um, it's like, and then he, this is about the ants, and then he drops dead, having mm -hmm. emptied his sperm into his lady love sperm, which yeah. he keeps in a special place to use at our own discretion, blah 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 blah. So. I thought she was pregnant. And then she could be the pregnant. Can mm. right, uh -huh. we talk about the end? Because I, yes. I was just like, okay. So, okay, yeah, the end. Yeah, the end was good. So the parts when Jadine has those vision of that, of, well, they're not ghosts, the, the angst. Paint. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So she's having vision of that. It almost seemed as though maybe, because similar to like a lot of like Caribbean literature, that there's this omnipotence like there's some sort of power that mm. women have over there especially like something like you know like 
the book of night woman stuff like that but i was thinking like did she lead um did she lead sun into like maybe an afterworld type of thing but well, then also could it be also like full on circle because see if you read the last chapter the last last part like i did and then reread it again it could be one whole continuous yeah story it could be but like you cuz you the thing is is the symbolism is really cool because this idea that this woman is blind uh -huh. is basically uh -huh. using the current to get him to the island but she doesn't take him directly she takes him on the other Around side the of the bay. island yeah exactly and she keeps telling him you're going to find it you're going to find it but then there's this image of this what do they call it these horsemen uh -huh. Uh -huh. that are supposed to be yeah that's they're like they're like these images of of nature you know of uh, of the of the wild and it's almost like he's going to join this band like he, that's what that's the image that I got out of it like he's going with them he's clearly not going to be able to find that house in the dark on right. the stones oh, okay. right she's left him I, on the wrong side it's almost like she's she, she's left him there on purpose Absolutely. She knows that his purpose is not oh, yeah, to be yeah, yeah. with Jardine. Not, his purpose not, is... She took him there to get him out because the whole went, once Lickety Split happened, I was like... This yeah, is exactly. Get him out of this is a thing because the, the way that that last little, that last line, the way it's written, it's written and it's, it's out of, I mean, it's out of character for what you would expect um, is now, the way it's written. Is a, then he ran, Lickety Split, Lickety Split, look, looking... Neither to the left nor to the right, lickety split, lickety split, lickety split. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's almost like he's in the throes of of running towards this these cavalier men. You know, mm -hmm. that he's going to join them because that's his true purpose. That's who he is. He's going to rejoin himself. He's not going to find out where Jadine is. He yeah, she tells, doesn't he tells really him, care. She, she tells him, small boy, she said, don't go to La Art de la Croix. Her voice was a calamitous whisper coming out of the darkness toward him like Jaws. Yeah. But get her. There is yeah. nothing in her parts for you. She That's has right. She her ancient properties. Exactly. I, That's it. Right there. I thought it was... I, I can see where y'all are coming from, too. I also saw, for me anyways, I thought that like I saw it as if it was going to go back again to the beginning when like the first line of the sentence was the first line of the book is he mm. believed he was safe. He stood on the railing of HMS, the, 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 the boat that he just gets on. But mm -hmm. I could see where you're going, coming from, Didi. I just thought that I was just like, is this supposed to be like an infinity type of thing? It just keeps repeating like, like an Ouroboros almost. So. Oh no, I didn't think of it. I didn't think of it like that. I thought of it more or less that he was going to join something that was truly him. He's okay. going towards his real uh, purpose. Okay. Um, he's not going to be led astray by you know beautiful women and all kinds of other crap. He's mm -hmm. going towards his true self. Mm -hmm. I, the part where you said the true self. It can relate to Sula. I got it. Oh my God, I got it. <laughs> okay. You're going to make me I might have to go back and read Sula because it's been a while. It's been a minute. In Sula, in, Sula, in, Sula, in, Sula, in Sula, the person who is Tar Baby has a different role than... <clears throat> and it's a, it's a good son, role. Um, what he does or, to the story. So, okay, never mind. Okay, okay, I, I see it. I see it, I see it. Okay. I mean, I don't know. I mean, it's that's just what that's how I interpreted it when I read it. Because in the beginning, I read it. I think I even reread re this that last part. I must have read it about three times because mm -hmm. I was yes, like, "Oh, I, mean. <laughs> I don't remember that ending." You know, I was like, "Wait a second, let me read that again." Because I'm not sure. You know, I think I might have read the ending three times because I, you know, because I was like, "Am I getting the am, am I feeling this correctly?" Because this, I think, this ending is purposely. It's kind of open. Yeah, you can, you made, can, yeah, you can think of whatever. I mean, that that's just my interpretation, but somebody else could interpret it differently. Mm -hmm. Um, there's see, she's left it like that I on purpose. Aside from because I did get the him joining the the cavalier men on the hill, 
I yeah. didn't get that. Um, which I would like to know more about because I got that they were ghosts, that they were spirits, and I did that yeah. yeah. was dying. <laughs> but I also got him being uh, along with what Teresa, Teresa tells him, or Teresa, however you say her name, what she tells him that that was him getting out of the pool yeah. of JD, the pool yeah. getting out of the tar yeah. of JD. Like, I, I yeah. JD to be. I think they all are tar baby to each to each other. Yeah, you know, they right? are. I but think they I, are. I perceive JD to be like the the focal point of who the tar baby is because everybody yeah. is sucked into her in one way or another. In one way or another, yeah, I agree. Yeah. yeah. All right. Let me see if there was any other uh, thing. Oh, let's talk about um the theme of parenting <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> Michael. <laughs> let's hear it for the parenting. Let's hear it for bad parents. Yay. <laughs> Yay for the bad parents. <laughs> oh man. Wow. I, um yeah. A lot, it's, a lot uh, of the parenting that happens in this book is people giving up their parental responsibilities to, to some, someone else. To someone else. Yeah. Like, like, you know, Valerian gave up the parental responsibility to Margaret and, mm -hmm. you know, served as a comfort piece for Michael, but he was an ignorant comfort. Comfort. Ignorant, yeah. He yeah. had no idea of what was going on. Um, mm. After the death of Jadine's mom, she comes to live with Sydney and Ondine, but Sydney and Ondine give up the role of parenting to an extent to Valerian and Margaret because she doesn't yeah. have a relationship with Sydney and Ondine that respects them as her no. as her elders, as her guardian. No. She doesn't have that relationship with them. She has more of a relationship with them like Valerian and Margaret have mm. with them. She, mm. says she sleeps in a different part of the house. She's completely yeah. she's separate from them. Every now and again, she goes into the kitchen, but yeah. she's completely separate from them. That's what's so interesting about that and brings then, in the class thing because when son arrives, they give him silk pajamas. They put him up in a room, and the, there they are, all the way over there on the other side, like you know, like they're like nobody, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so you see quickly. Um. Uh. You, you know, he. There. Uh, on. Dean is just like you know. What is. What is going on here? You know, like but we are still in the D class by this Negro. It's what they're trying to yeah, say. You know. Too, but the, the whole conversation between Andin or Andine and. Uh, I was about to say Sula, Michael, uh, <laughs> and Jadine about J you know Jadine staying on the island and be and becoming someone to take care of to take up the role of being caregiver to Sydney and Andine after they have taken care of her for all of these years. Like the expect the the ridiculousness of that conversation with yeah. for Andine to have with Jadine when you've never yeah. You've never had this kind of relationship with her. So, like, while I understand what you're thinking, you've given her every opportunity to not view you as someone she needs to take yeah. care of. If it came to taking care of somebody, she's going to feel that way about Valerian or Margaret. She does feel that way about Margaret. Which is really, really weird because there's that scene where Margaret starts using the N-word oh, to describe some. And and it's really funny because she's gonna say it and then on and and then it's um it Jadine finishes it and says the N word for her. Mm -hmm. Oh, that was just she was she was okay with the N word, but she wasn't good with gorilla. Like, no gorilla, that kind of like for you, but don't call him don't don't say gorilla la, la, la. No, but you could say the N word. That's okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, it was weird. That, I mean, no. we're talking some dysfunctional people up in this yes. book. Yeah, and again, oh, yeah. that throws that too goes back to Sun calling her white, like how offended yeah. she was. But yeah. when, Sun yeah. called, when Sun calls her white, but yeah. Yeah. she has that's the, that's the error. That's the error that she puts out about herself, and she doesn't. Yeah. I don't think she even realized it. It's no, because is uh -huh. typical, um, Margaret, when she called him, you know, a nigger and a gorilla. Uh, yeah. she, she see this black man, this tall black man. 
with the strong dreadlocks, you know, strong features. And, it, you know, at this one point in time, when and, and Margaret were talking to each other, uh, Sun apologized to her for hiding in the closet. And she was like, you know, yeah, you you know, you freaked me out. I was scared. And he was like, why well, I scared you so much? He was like, well, you know, you're so big. And he was like, I'm big. I was actually squatting in the, in the closet. How do you know I was so big? So it's that stereotype yeah. where someone called the police or something like that. Like, you know, there's a black man, yeah. a big black man outside my house. It's that same stereotypical that all black men perhaps are big and scary. Yeah, so exactly. Exactly. Personality. Even when he says that he's shorter than Valerian. Yeah. Right. So he's not even really that that's tall. That's yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And, and yeah. my question is, like, we don't get much of Sydney's. Do we get, or did I miss much, you know, Sydney's description and Sydney's features, like where he, I don't know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you get, you know, the, the, the hair descriptions are priceless because all of the hair descriptions give you all of the stereotypical things that people say about Afro hair, oh, especially, especially when locks. Margaret is talking to, is talking about uh, how, how nice J uh, Jadine's hair Jadine's is. Jadine's hair is because it's all flow and everything. Hair is so stringy, but her, doesn't she remind you of Eridici, uh, of what's the chick's name from Eridici and when don't you remember when she was hanging from the wires? I'm like, what? Yeah, the fuck? yeah. <laughs> but then, yet when she comes back from the trip, she's cut her hair really short, so yeah. evidently it's more afro ish. Yeah, and then the reaction that Margaret has to her hair is just like, like that's different, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> She doesn't love it, but you know, she's like, mm, oh, what have you done to your hair? Oh yeah. Mm. You know, so you get you get you get all of these <laughs> descriptions of hair and and, and different contexts. And unfortunately, you get those terrible stereotypical things that people say about locks and about Afro hair. And and then you get um Gideon's daughter. The one that um, wants them to get her a wig from the U.S. Yeah, yeah. You got her. All she wants to do is wear a wig. She doesn't. She just wants a wig. And I think at the end, she's actually wearing a red wig or and something. It looks like horrible. That. And it looks horrible. It looks like a. It looks like a cheap wig, you know. Um, mm -hmm. And then she gets really mad when I think somebody rips it off her head. No, somebody tries to rip it off her head. Yeah, she and up, she's like, like, "Don't touch my hair," touch my you know, hair. like. My hair, <laughs> my hair. <laughs> so you, you, the hair thing is pretty big, I think, in the book as well. Yeah. So, and it's also because that you know, son cutting his, um, cutting off his locks makes a change in how they view the him. The they view him differently. When he goes home to Elo, they ask him, "What you do to your hair?" Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. K earlier I, was mentioned. Mm -hmm. What? Oh, well, Kay, Kay on the chat earlier was talking about how Sun kind of was like a son to Valerian in the sense that, you know, like he took him in, that type of. I don't yeah. understand that. Whole no, bad. I don't I, think I that. Don't you know what I, I do think, though? I think that when Sun arrived, he gelled with Valerian. Because he was giving Valerian all these hints and stuff about how to improve his gazebo situation, mm -hmm. you know, with his plants and stuff. Uh, I disagree. I disagree. Oh, <laughs> no, you can't disagree with that because, no, because he wasn't going by right his little gazebo, okay? Did you forgetting that when, when he got caught, when he got caught in the closet, you know, uh, Valeria, he didn't think twice about getting his man in Rome. He didn't call him for I know. How do you think? He was yeah, like, but, damn, I was Yeah, but it's not because. He was, Valeria was like, get him a room. Make sure he got this. You know, like, he was caring to this Yeah, girl. but that's, him. for me, that's not the sentiment of a man who's treating someone as a son. Right. Oh, I don't that's think. That's all I'm saying. I think that Valerian made a change. I mean, that <laughs> son made a change for Valerian concerning his gazebo situation where he had the ants coming in there this and wasn't growing right you know, that I wasn't growing right I and then suddenly son came and told him 
two or three things and then suddenly all this stuff was growing right the ants weren't coming in anymore things had changed and that's just the yeah, change I, of a yeah, new person I, I added to the when, mix i thought when um Valer my, my take from valerian inviting son to sit at the table with his you know dirty locks and funky stuff yeah. was a way to Shake it up. Because he spends a lot of time yeah. working at getting at getting under Margaret's skin. Yeah, he's a manipulator. Ah, that's what yeah, I got that, too. Yeah, he's a manipulator. That's a way that was a way to get under Margaret's skin. And the side effect of that that he didn't expect was that he also got under Sydney's skin. And Sydney yeah. was like, This some bullshit. This I some bullshit. Make. Exactly. Yeah. Well, oh, yeah. Don't come up in this house and be stealing your food. Exactly. Sydney's like let him move so I can shoot him. He was like, let him move so I can shoot his ass. <laughs> yeah. He reminds me of, uh, you know, what they call in the butch, you know, Uncle Tom, you know, the slave mm -hmm. master mentality. That's what Sydney gave me Absolutely. in the book. Sydney and Sydney and Undine, I agree. And Undine, we both agree on that. We agree on that. Yeah, we agree on that. But I that, think yeah, everybody would think seen, that. Have you seen um, what's that movie with the um, where Leonardo DiCaprio and Jamie Fox? No. Um, yeah, I see that Django. Django, yeah. yeah. You remember the old man that was in Django the house? Django and Change, yeah. yeah. Yeah, as much as I hated watching it, yeah, I've seen Daniel it. L. Jackson's character is the Uncle Tom in that character in that movie. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's yeah. Why I'm, because... I'm obsessed with Samuel L. Jackson, and I didn't want to spend the movie wanting to punch him in his fucking face. Yeah, exactly. Oh, it's really bad. Okay. Yeah, I, it's he, bad. His personality reminded me of Samuel L. Jackson. I could, I just, I can't. I don't want to see my Samuel. L. And... So, yeah, so, it's so, really so, bad. That the movie. movie when Jamie Foxx came to the house, and you know. It, Leonardo DiCaprio was like, hey, set him up in a room. And Samuel Jackson was like, a room? You want this dirty nigga to be in your house? In your white mm -hmm. shit? Oh, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. You know, I, okay. Got, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Absolutely. I got from uh, Sydney. So it's the, it had that slave white mentality type feel mm -hmm. to it. Mm -hmm. Yes, it did. I, yeah, I agree. I agree. They, Sydney and Undine have, or Undine, I ain't said her name the same twice. <laughs> I don't know if it's Undine or Undine. Oh, I thought yeah. Undine. I mean, like, neither, or Undine. neither one Please. of them have, they both have, Sydney has the, the, like, Uncle Tom mentality, and Undine has the um, house slave to field hand mentality. Yeah, that's right. The way that yeah. she like you used to pluck chickens and yeah, exactly. Get Gideon gets all the props for bringing her that bloody ass chicken with them feathers on it. I was like, yes, get yeah, but you know like, what? This is what you used me, to do, and now you too good to do it. That scene of the plucking of the chicken was mm -hmm. nothing more than a foreshadowing, of, a sh foreshadowing of what is to come to all the people that are in this situation, in this house. I agree with uh, Tatiana. She said she thought. Damn it, Mathis, um, we was doing good. <laughs> no, uh, Ardine, she don't think she was too good to pluck chickens. I think she was just getting too old up in age to pluck the chickens. I think she was just getting tired and exhausted. So she just oh, gonna do the pluck a chicken. No, but that's no. That's one. She had to run the chickens, chickens and pluck the chickens. She couldn't yeah, do. I've, it. Never, I've never. I got exhausted. Chicken, so I don't know what goes into doing that. So I can't. I have no, no exactly frame of reference for that. Exactly. But, the entire, I'm, I'm saying that not just in terms of the chicken plucking situation, but the entirety that instead of referring to these people by name, you call Gideon Yard Man, and you call yeah. like every female that he's brought to the house, I was giving it to say to the plantation, every female that he's brought to the house <laughs> to help him with in the yard is Mary. She Mary. Never, yeah, like, never bothers to learn that these No, anybody's name. Okay, yeah. I was and I was thinking that they was it was rude, his, huh? It was rude. Yeah, she was very disrespectful to um, yeah, no, around her. However, house, when I read her versus field hanging situation, not not just the not just the chicken plucking. I yeah. like the chicken plucking situation. I yeah, thought I thought that, it was, that was a good. That was a good like stick your tongue out and then and then from Gideon to her. Like, yeah, get your bitch, uh, get you. I just want to say, when I got from Ordeen, I feel like she was just tired and exhausted of her life. Oh, Absolutely. my God. She was yeah. older, she was 15 years older than uh, Sydney. She was older than Sydney as well. There was an age difference. 
Yeah. I don't know you remember. But yeah, that's that's one Whitney, age Whitney's, Sydney's older than her. The the same age difference that's between Valerian and Margaret is present between Sydney and Andine. But um, yeah, same age difference. And yeah, so yeah. I feel like she was just being just fed up and tired. And you remember when Jadine came back home from her excursion to New York, mm -hmm. uh, Jadine was like, please don't ask me to be a parent. Please don't ask me to take care of you because I don't want to. I don't want to be. I don't want exactly. to. Right, right. That's that. You know, she felt like, she felt like her, her aunt and uncle was getting old, too old, and she wanted them, you know, to be. To take care of her. She yeah. wants to, she yeah. wants to be able to. She wants to be able to retire and housework. Like you'll see, that's that's a common theme in like the slave narrative: the wear yeah. and tear on your body that happens when yeah. you are doing housework and work, like running in for the master. It it ages them early, and like yeah. the you know characters that we have in some of these novels that they come across like they're 60, 70 years old, but when you, they're probably yeah. in their forties. In their forties, yeah. So yeah, I think so. That whole that's all I'm saying. Yeah, that's all I'm saying. Yeah. I think she was just. So we I'm don't not... disagree, man. Let's take that back. We agree. Yeah, you agree. <laughs> okay. agree okay, we agree on that. Yeah, we, yeah. No, we we agree on that. I told I totally agree. I didn't say that. I, I wasn't saying that she was too old a feeling that she was too good to pluck to you know pluck the chicken i was saying on the side i wasn't referring to that on her side i was referring to that on the side of gideon not plucking the chicken because that was not plucking it that he yeah that for her he knew what she wanted her to do he just didn't yeah. do it and acting yeah. like he was illiterate and stupid and just brought it to her with this big smile on the on his face with the with the neck dripping blood and all of that he knew what he was doing yeah yeah it was awful and, and so i was saying yeah. that on the side of on his side, like those little things that in other slave narratives, the field hands would do to get to the house slaves yeah. because there was that separation between the separation. Two. Yeah, definitely. And that that chicken, that chicken game. plucking and chicken r r neck ringing was definitely a foreshadowing of what was to come mm. for sure. Because mm. she she so she cute. goes through a lot of that, you know. She gets into that nitty gritty of all that, and you're just like, ew, gosh. Yeah, yeah. What's coming next? Nothing good, you know. Like, um, I, and I was reading, and I was like, yeah, I've, I've never done this, and I won't. I, I, and I won't. <laughs> I was like, I'm not plucking the chickens. Yeah, like all that into consideration, you know, chasing around chickens and slap, you know, cutting them up and plucking them. I was like, wow, they that's cut them. They work. bring the necks. They bring their necks. Yeah, they bring the necks. So they, they didn't, it's like I, and I, I know, think to I take the, the to pluck them. them, I think they have to dip them in hot water. Yeah, you have to yeah. boil them. It's like and par, then, par boiling them and then pull them out. Yeah, and then you can pull the feathers out. Mm -hmm. And After. if you don't work it fast enough, you have to dip them again. So what? Again, so it's, yeah. it's wear on your hands because your hands are going into this hot water, and you have to quickly handle it while it's still. Ugh. No, I can't do that. Sorry. Yeah, I'll I never know, do I that. I know the mechanics behind it. I'm just mm. in the Philippines. My family used to do it all the time. Well, they still do it all the time. They still. I was getting ready to say, don't they? Don't do it now. Oh, they they do. And yeah, it, yeah. So. <laughs> you do it in uh, India. Mm -hmm. hmm? I mean, there, there are people who still do it here. There are people in the, um, where my family still, yeah. still have chicken coops. And they, uh, yeah, they, they take care of all of that themselves. The thing though, oh. they still do it in the Caribbean as well, too. Yeah. And I remember the I went, eggs are really good. Yeah, I went to the Bahamas. It was just the good. eggs are really good. <laughs> what is that? The eggs are said, good. Those eggs are really good. Those the fresh eggs, eggs they're really good. good. Oh, I never had fresh eggs. Oh, fresh, fresh eggs, eggs are good. awesome, man. Versus the versus the grocery store, it's, it's yeah. Oh it's my tasty. god, they're awesome. Fresh eggs. Oh, wow. really good. Yeah, I got so good. good. You need you need to find you find you somebody who has a coop who will yeah some eggs. or get a good have couple to put of chickens. In the refrigerator, like you don't you don't have to refrigerate them. Yeah, no, know. they're they good. They when they take them to the store, okay, that's a whole other. That's a tangent. Maybe we can do is ask people that are still watching if they have any questions. I'll, yes, I'll, I'll put it on the chat. Does anybody have any questions? Uh, let's see who's let's see who's watching. Um, There's a lot uh, of people watching. Yeah, yeah we've got. Uh, turnout. 
There's KT, we've got Shamina. Uh, we've got Denise. Denise, yeah. Oh, that's right. You can see the list of who's here. I can I, I'm I'm looking at my iPad. Yeah, without us. Um we've got Danielle. There's Michael and there's we've Matt. got Arlene. There's Dee Dee. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I can't. Okay, so if anybody has any questions they want to ask, um, um, Kay says, Who was your favorite character? Yeah. Okay, girl, mm -hmm. my, fa say. my favorite dysfunctional character. <laughs> Let me yeah. think. That was my favorite character. Who? Son, I, I, Son knew, I didn't know he was unpredictable, I didn't know what he was going to do next. I mean, he was very outspoken, uh, he was very uh, reckless, and um. He just made people look inside themselves. And so I like that aspect of his character. So uh, he, I found him very entertaining. Oh, I, I, think, I think the least focused on character was my favorite. And that's Sydney. Michael. Oh. No, Sydney. <laughs> oh, Sydney, yeah, that's a good yeah, character. I think, I, I, I think because he even, even in his anger, he seemed to be like the most level headed out of the bunch. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, and you know, I like I like the if you know any any other thing, I like them all for the sake of the arguments. The arguments yeah. thing. Like there's this this whole thing where his son tells her to go back to um go back to Paris and have that white man's baby and oh my Oh yeah, God. that whole thing about oh yeah, he went off on that slave tangent. Oh Lord, but it was everything. I was like, I yeah. Yeah, it was pretty. Who it was said pretty that? Intense. Son. Son. Oh, son. Yeah, yeah. I like yeah. That. He was like, no, I that was so intense. That was like, yeah. That was an, that was an, yeah. that was intense. Yeah, that really was intense. Because he was, you know, calling her a white girl, right? Because the way she was, looking yeah. and the way yeah. she was acting. You know, why you stop behaving like a white girl? She's like, I'm not white, and she, he was like, well, not acting like one. And so yeah. there was, you know, race and classes. You know, there was, you know, they were talking about it. And so, because he know he knew they looked at him as a certain way, you know, the, he knew that he didn't fit in. So, mm -hmm. yeah, and it's funny. And people today still behave the same way amongst the black community. We still treat yeah. Them the same way. So, it. Yeah. Um, Arlene asked, "What was your favorite part?" Right here. I had. To, I had to <laughs> she go already find got it. it. I had to go find it. Correct, he said. The problem is not Valerian. The problem is me. Solve it with me or without me, but solve yeah. it because it ain't going anywhere. You sweep me under the rug and your children will cut your throat. That fucker uh, in Europe, the one you're thinking about marrying, go have his children. That should suit you. Then you can do exactly what you bitches have always done. Take care of white folks' children. Feed, love, and care for white people's children. That's what you were born for. That's what you were born for all your life. So that's that probably the best. Baby. That's your job. I was like, that's the best. That's probably the one of the best scenes in the book. Yeah, yes. I have to admit, that's one of the best ones in the book. Yes, I like all the scenes of them too. Actually, that one is that one is a really hot scene. That's really oh, good. That one, I I like. I read that. Like you read the, the end. Who said they read the end? Well, you did. Uh, Didi said you. Read I read it like three times. times. I read that multiple times. Yeah, because that ending is it's like wow. Wow. Um, another question is, what did you think of the relationship and conversations between Therese and Gideon? Oh, yeah, because they have a lot of discussions about, you know, because they were the ones who stole the apples and got fired for stealing right. the apples. They, um... They bring up some really good points because they bring up you know, some really good points, but their relationship is very interesting because they're not a couple. Yeah, they're like family by marriage, right? Marry, yeah. They have the, the dynamic between the two of them is like the way that they the, take care of each other is like a it's couple. couple. It's couple like. But they're not a couple. But they're not a couple. I think they're like cousins or something. Yeah. Or siblings or I don't know. Or something like that. And then the cousin died. And so he assumed mm. care for her because yeah. she has her own, because of her blindness, she has her own. Yeah. Blindness, so he assumes yeah. when, she, when, she, when he moves, he takes her with him. Yeah. Yeah. Because he was from the U.S. 
He yeah, 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 yeah. She and and she seems to have some kind of prejudice against Americans somehow. Mm-hmm. Um, from some of the things that she said, you know, especially when she when they met up with Son, you could tell that she didn't like Americans very much. From some of the things that she was saying, um, but yeah, but he's American. Um, the guy, so yeah. They're very, they're a very strange couple, actually, because you feel bad for them because they've been displaced because of the stealing of the apples, and that's another scene that's really good. It's also yes, because yeah. when Son says, "But you know, why did you, you know, why did you fire them for that?" Because they're the ones that went all those, you know, miles to get the damn apples. They mm-hmm. brought them back. They w- washed them and done everything. What so? Why, what so you why just fire them because yeah why happened? fire them you know kind of thing you and know then, and, and he was like because they're mine it's my property and they right. stole and it and some some folks steal things and they get a room and they get yeah exactly that's that's what that's what they were saying the, the black yeah. couple on dean was saying you know yeah so, um so you saw the classism mean, again son, doesn't son ask him or does sydney ask him if they had i think son asked him if they had asked for the apples would you yeah. have given them to him given yeah. the apples to them yeah he so wants the power again he does mm-hmm. he wants the power and then it just shows again here again the classism between black people even yes you know because you 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 have um son who steals food for a week and is, you know, creeping around in the house and stuff. And he gets a room, gets still a room. pajamas and the whole thing. And then you and have these people that are working for him shower. and they steal a few apples and they get fired. He goes to bed without taking a shower. He gets yeah. in that bed in those pajamas without and those still pajamas that are too small. Like see from, for, from three weeks ago. That, that with, with the silk pajamas that are too small for his ass. Because <laughs> you have this impression that he had like the sleeves up to here and, and it even said that the, the, the pants were at his shins, you know? Yeah. Like like a gorilla in pajamas or something, you know? It's and he smells like creepy. from three weeks ago. And they get, get it, get it, get, take these pajamas, get in the bed and... <laughs> yeah, Another, but that just shows um, Valerian is trying to make people go crazy over that. Yes. Um, another mm-hmm. question is, would by Lovely Reads says, would you say this is one of your favorite Toni Morrison books? Where does it rank? Now I've only read this is only my second. Read, at so all. So I, I'm going through her bibliography, and it's pretty good. To be honest, uh-huh. I don't think I don't think this is her best. It's I not think, her best, yeah. but it's not her worst. Yeah, I don't think. Yeah. I think it's pretty good I've though. Hearing, I think Beloved. And Book of Solomon is going to be like the top. Yeah, Song of Solomon is for me. I think I think the best is beloved. Song of Solomon is very good too. The Blue Eye is one of my favorites. That's, yeah, that's, that's really good too. Favorite. Yeah, same here. Yeah. This for one is rating, pretty good though. Yeah, for my rating, this one is pretty I good. Say, I would have to say the Blue Eye for me, and then yeah. comes Song of Solomon, and then is Sula, and then is Tar Baby. Okay. What about Beloved? I haven't read Beloved. Oh, okay. okay. That's going to be my next read. Come on now. What about Beloved? I haven't read it yet. Well, the, the thing is, with Toni Morrison, she's not going to be the best. Yeah. Yeah. But the thing is, with Toni Morrison, her, her, I think her better works are her earlier works. I Honestly. Completely, I completely agree with that because the first book that I ever read from her Officially, was God help the child? Oh no, that's oh, not good. That did yeah. not go over well with her. That's probably book. one of her worst ones, yes. right there. But when I first read, I was like, "Oh, this is pretty good." But then Mm-mm. a lot of people, nah. like, this isn't her best work. I was like, "So you mean there's even better than this?" Than this? Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> so and then after I read the bluest eye, uh, oh my god, the bluest eye is awful. Like, awesome. Oh yeah, I was like, "Oh, this is nowhere near the level of God help the child." Um, God help the child is really not one of her best. It really isn't. Another question is: Another question is: It seems normally Morrison writes within the perspective from the black community, but in this one, she introduces the white perspective. What do you think she wanted to communicate? 
I think it's the the dynamics between Valerian and Margaret and the effect that the relationship between Valerian and Margaret and Sydney and Andine have with the with the four of them. Like the effects yeah. of that because they're the only white people on the island. Yeah. And so the effects of that relationship on them and also how Valerian feels like he's inserted himself as an acceptable member of this community. That's not the right wording that I want to say, but as yeah. an integral person in this community, like he's he's good friends with the doctor. And we're yeah. gonna have this dinner and we're gonna have the doctor come down. Yeah. But you know, the but he's still separate because the doctor has to make nobody nobody gets to him easily. Yeah. He's set set far and apart from the general populace on this island and that you know that uh, that ability to be there and still be separate yeah. because of because of where you are where you are mentally because he separates himself in the house the conversations that he has with Sydney like at first you you come across thinking that they're like they have this friend this kind of friendship or camaraderie between the two of them and I think that's what Sydney thought for a while too, until mm. the introduction of Son into you know yeah. into their lives. And Sydney sees where he actually resides in mm. the hierarchy of Valerian's life. But I think it's also it's the idea of having the white perspective. It also just gives you a chance to compare the different classisms from the white perspective, but also from the black perspective mm -hmm. to show you that it's the same. <laughs> it's the same, you know, yeah. when you judge somebody because they have less money than you, it's the same, whether you're white like or black. Different. We like exactly. Different. And it's yeah, it's not, it's the same. And I think that's the only one of the main reasons why it's from that perspective. It's not a perspective that is, um, I don't think that is overbearing compared to the black perspective because Sun is a very prominent character in the book. We hear his voice and his voice sounds stronger even than, than um, Valerian's character, for example. Because there's a moment where we see, you know, at the beginning of the book, we see Valerian and Margaret a lot. But as the book goes on, we see them less and less. Less and because less. Especially once the big reveal of the abuse happens, because oh, yeah. it's, it's a cathartic moment for Valerian because he realizes how how much how like how much he thinks he has control over. Yet you missed this entire yeah. situation that went on for years, yeah. and so he goes into himself. And there's a change in power <clears throat> in the relationship between Valerian and Margaret once that reveal takes place. They switch places. Margaret now becomes this somehow becomes this mentally strong person once yeah. the reveal takes place and Valerian is the one who he sits, like he stops taking care of what's in the garden. Yeah. He secludes himself from everyone, you know, from everyone else in the house, including Margaret. He don't care about what he looked like. He don't care about getting this. No, he's right. broken. He's yeah. broken. Yeah. yeah. He's broken by that, by that, that news. He's just, he can't believe that he missed it. Mm -hmm. You know, he's, he's, he realizes he's made a very serious mistake. Uh, oh. The other question is, in what way do you think, by um, Shamia, in what way do you think the plot would have changed if Michael had actually shown up for Christmas? <laughs> <laughs> he would have killed his mom and daddy he, right there. I, he, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't think, I never, I never read, I was, you never thought he was thing. coming. <laughs> you never thought he was coming, huh? Yeah, I never thought he was no. coming. At, at I no never thought point, it was coming either. At no point in the story did I think. He in the beginning, you're not sure why he's not coming, but you know full well he ain't coming. Right. Because right. everybody says he ain't coming. She's the only one that thinks he's actually coming. And she's like, she's holding on to this, um, to this nugget of hope. Yeah. Until Christmas Day happens, and I'm like, yeah. It takes hours to get well, to, to get no, to the I, house. I thought from the airport. Was, I think when I was reading it, I was like, oh, he's gonna show up. He's gonna show oh, up. you thought he was gonna I, show up? Nah. I was like, oh, I'm hoping she show, he shows up, but but I don't think I if thought, he had I shown up was I thought um Michael was gonna show up and then there's gonna be some tension between Jardine and, and Michael. Michael. 
That's what, that's that's what I thought. Yeah. No, I, I didn't think he was going to show up just because everybody was saying he ain't showing up. Well, I think as a writer, I think um, Tony Morris, I think she, the dynamic of the story, I think she started off probably thinking that uh, Michael was going to be the tension between the, between Jay Dean and, because, you know, in a, in a book, she was talking about how Michael is more into, um, you know, Black, you know, she was he was like being active and like he's um, like an activist, activist. Type. And he was an yeah. activist about yeah. black cause and he was trying to get Jadine to be an activist to you know be more aware yeah. of her surroundings. So yeah. yeah, so I feel like he was I think Tony Morrison took another direction with the story uh, at the last minute, I think. I think she decided clearly clearly he would have clubbed his mama. Okay. Yeah. He would have clubbed her or yeah. cut her or something. Or yeah. poisoned her. Well, or, I can't, or came in with a don't touch me. It probably would have been a huge explosion and things would have probably revealed itself. But um, yeah, it would have been pretty heated. People would've it would have been very bad, I think. Yeah, because we. I, 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 I got the idea that it's been like he turned 18 and he left home. And he, he left home, home as soon as he could. Yeah, so it's just like. Um, uh, Margaret is looking for an opportunity to have some kind of reconciliation with Michael. I think it would have been, I, I agree with that, it would have been a huge blow up because Michael's oh, reconciliation is not something that's going to mm. come like, it's, it ain't going to be pretty. Because he going no. to he, he, he gonna have some but also keep in stuff. mind it's not going to be pretty because even the dad didn't even know that he was being abused. So it mm -hmm. would have been really bad. Mm -hmm. Really bad. Well, before he showed up, before the whole, you know, abuse, the abuse, being abusive towards him, I didn't know, you know, he had any issues with Michael. So I was thinking he was going to show up because the, the abusive uh, allegations didn't come to us. Right, the, right. Um, yeah. So I never, I never thought. I, never I would have never guessed that Mark was being abusive. So, Me like, neither. Wow. Me neither. No, I, but there is I'm something, there is something in the beginning. I can't remember if I marked it, but there is a passage. That kind of gives you a clue in the beginning. Um, I'd have to see if I can find it, but there's something that I don't remember who says it, but there's something like I don't know if it's an omniscient narrator something or something. That Mardine says about yeah, there's something. Yeah, there's something about her spoiling it, about her spoiling him. And yeah, there's something there in the way she says that phrase. That it doesn't movie. sound like it's just simple spoiling. There's something else there. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. like a clue to, to kind of give you the idea that he's being abused, but it doesn't say that he's it being abused. It doesn't say it. I didn't pick up doesn't on it. Say it, yeah, it, it, it doesn't say it, but it insinuates it. I didn't think no, it was, was abuse either. I, I thought, thought it was like a news bomb just dropped. And mm -hmm. I was like, where'd I come from? You know, where this person I was just thinking that he was a kid that turned 18 and decided he didn't want to stay. He didn't want to stay on this island. He didn't want to go to this island with his parents. And so he's going to make a life for himself and stay away from it. Like he was staying away in a way that Margaret couldn't make herself stay away because she needed that companionship at some point with Valeria. And that's why she would come back to visit. So I was thinking that Michael was able to do what Margaret couldn't do, not thinking until the big reveal that Margaret ain't coming because you treated, you did him wrong. You did him dirty. Mm. Uh, Kay, Kay's asked, um, and speaking of islands, do you think she chose an island as the setting to show how emotionally isolated the characters are yeah. from another? Yeah. Yeah, and that, the whole, uh, and the whole I, naturistic I, thing. The, yeah, the naturistic thing, and then the whole, um, legend of when the slaves were brought to the island yeah, they were exactly they were by the sight of the island yeah and, exactly because that's that's the that's teresa's line yeah and, and it's like you they were blinded when they saw it and then they kids blind too yeah um, that i'm still trying to wrap my wrap my head around the significance of that because she makes it it's said in the novel when son comes to the island and he makes his way off the boat and it's dark when he comes off of that boat that he's been creeping in before he goes to creep around the house. And um, it's a good, and it says it's a good thing that it was dark because from where he was getting off of the boat, that's where the his ancestors were struck blind. Exactly, yeah. So that's just supposed to also the island. It's like you said, it's this 
this past of slavery that is on this island is mm -hmm. this this I guess um presence of slavery all beyond or presence or whatever on. that is there um that helps to invigorate the story as well um along with the fact that they are pretty much isolated there there's only like 22 people on this island or something mm -hmm. um so it's obviously supposed to make them freaking stir crazy enough to act a fool and you know drive each other mad <laughs> because they don't have anything else to do all day i, I mean imagine living in a place where it's just awful like, I can't even, there's more than 23 people when we when I, I, I just, I can't imagine just being on that. Just and like you have to imagine there. because they take the boat over to the other city. They got to take a boat over boat. there. No a one boat. Can get, no one can easily get to this house. Talk you about the killer. Have a, a drive and a boat ride. The killer on the island. Mm. <laughs> I like the island life. I just the island. I like the heat. I like the mangoes. I like the coconut. I like to lay on the beach. I like the island life. Yeah, but twenty-two people on the whole island. I didn't get why Margaret was so upset being on the island. I was like, chill out. I mean, you're not because she doesn't have anything to do. She's she's connected to the city. She she's connected to the city. She's born. She has nothing to do there. She she that she she basically is not at her in her place there. So yeah. she's bored out of her mind, you know. Um, she's got nothing to do. He's yeah, quite happy to sit in his little. When, when Valerian goes into himself after the reveal, that's when she becomes comfortable because exactly well, because it gives her something to do. Now do. she has Valerian to take care of, and when Janine yeah. comes back to the um to the house, she's got all of his clothes out of the closet. Yeah. She's going to organize his clothes, and I'm yeah. thinking that is not a one day task. No, so she has she has something to do, and she's okay being there. And she now she's she's in control head. as well. Yep. She's in control. Mm -hmm. yep. uh. I have a question. So I, I was, I, think I was, so I was like discombobulated on this one scene where oh, you keep doing. I think you keep where, doing. Hold on. Go ahead. You talk to his dad. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> so there's a scene where Sun went, went inside uh, Jadine's room, and it was kind of it was going at it for some reason. I can I think he called you know was calling her names and talk about you know how did you get up to this? I think this was a scene he was when she smacked him and he helped. Mm -hmm. him. And then uh, he was like, um, like you. You, you smell, you stink. Yeah, I, I don't tell you. him I smelled you. Yeah, yeah. And he was like, don't let me tell um, Sydney. Valerian. Valerian. Don't let Valerian know don't that, Valerian yeah, I smelled you. you. And he was like, don't let tell Valerian that I smell you. So I was like, what did he mean by that? So I, do y'all not have any idea what he what that scene, that scene meant? It screamed violation for me. Yeah, exactly. And, and as far yeah. as not telling, as far as not telling Valerian, I, I felt, I think he felt he was eventually going to have some kind of rapport with yeah. Valerian and that in doing that that whole encounter would be would Jayden, be bad Valerian was seen yeah. as something that was not acceptable exactly and so he didn't want and, and it also Sully it, it made Jadine feel dirty and I don't think Sun was ignorant when he when he no, you know, made he knew that it. inference so yeah. I, I think the, the two tried to make Jadine feel a little a little dirty herself and then trying not to not wanting to damage what he thought could be a possible relationship because he's still filthy and got silk pajamas on and, and slept in a good day mm. you know when this whole situation happens and then she turns around and he's the, he's cleaned up and he's in the um greenhouse and mm. they're, chuck they're chuckling it up together yeah I got a different vibe from that on that scene, actually. Because it, it is, it's private, you know. Yeah. It's private. It's also to make him, to make her not tell Valerian because it would make Valerian look at him differently, poorly or badly. Because already he's in the good graces. He in the silk pajamas and he got his own room. Now, mm -hmm. if she tells him something as private as the way he made her feel, that might make. Valerian changes mind about him. That's why he doesn't want him to know about it. Because it does. It smacks of violation. It mm -hmm. smacks of, you know, somebody being 
I not think nice with this. Valerian valuing and caring more for Jadine as her patron. As his, yeah, caring more for Jadine as her patron than he did for his wife. Because he he didn't give two shits about how scared Margaret was. But I think he I think the whole patron idea yeah. to son made it seem made, makes him think that Jadine has Valerian has higher regard for Jadine than he does. Well, like here, Chanel Gaston, she says he was feeling inferior and tried to smear her. I agree, yeah. Chanel. Yeah, I agree too, Chanel. Yeah. yeah. Because, and if you look at it from an animalistic point of view, it's yeah. like when you, when you read novels, y'all know I like the paranormal romance stuff. So mm. when you get to, you know, you get to those kinds of novels and you have things that people who are shapeshifters or whatever, yeah. once they get the smell of their intended into their nostrils, it's like they can always find where they are. Once they, you know, get get their smell or taste their blood, the connection is, there's a connection that's made between the two of them. In those, mm -hmm. in that kind of situation, is not seen as a violation. Yeah. But it's that uh, for a, it's like that force and and a, con, and a freaking connection manages to be made after this interaction yeah i know that's what kills me too it's just like <laughs> oh this woman has like no self-respect for herself so it's like it's just whatever i mean ugh. yeah i mean um I think I, I think that, that that scene where he said I can smell you too, don't let him know I can smell you. I feel like he she meant Tori Morrison meant that you know he, he can smell her her ghettoness, her you know, her uh I guess her true self. It's because she, she was coming across as Sadidi and she wanted to be you know trying to be white. And so and so here again, why would he want her her to tell Valerian that? Right, it's the same problem. It's not the it's not the same problem. Saying I smelled you off. She was a freak. She was a freak. That's the reason why she ran away with him. She like he like I can smell you. You know, she was putting on a show in front of um uh Valerian and Margaret. Like he, I think son saw her true self. Like she knew he knew she was a little you know freak. You could think so, of it. You could think yeah, of it that way. Freak. And she was but, a little ratchet in some ways. And so she was just putting on an air to, to fit in with Margaret or Dean. Because she, you know, she never was, you know, she never looked at herself at the same level as her. <laughs> Denise so, just said, she's laughing. She said, Mathis. She's laughing. <laughs> 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 it might be ridiculous or what? I, I no, well, it's can't, just because I can't the thing is about him. Hiding her real self situation yeah. because she's been in this situation I, I i think more of her not knowing who she is because she's been in this household situation for out you know before she went to france for the majority of her life so she doesn't yeah. know we don't i don't i don't remember if it said how old she was when her mom and dad died in the, died in the car accident but this is like what other for her what yeah. other self does she know herself to have because or think that she could have because this is what her existence has been for so she went from there to modeling to going to to yeah. school in France and then modeling. So and they know they the know about her today. boyfriend because Margaret even says something about it. About yeah, her yeah. having boyfriends and stuff, um in you France. know, when she's modeling. So it's not then it's not it's not uh anything new that you know, she picks up guys a lot. They know it. I mean, because mm -hmm. Margaret even makes references to it. But it's just the fact that what he says is is it's there's something dirty about it. There's something that's it's it's not um it's not particularly nice. Why do you think she kept it a secret to run away with son? Because she nobody wanted to run away. It won't no secret. She doesn't tell nobody. She, well, she because left. She didn't tell anybody. That's true. No, they left. They, I don't think, I don't they, think they ran away. And they knew she well, was leaving. Yeah. They knew, that, they knew that she was leaving. They knew she was not going to no. say that that's not what she does. Well, I they yeah, they knew that she was leaving. They just didn't. Jadine, agree with it. Yeah. They didn't, didn't want, agree with yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. She didn't. They didn't want her to go with her. How do y'all know she was? How did he know that she was leaving? 
because, because she wasn't then, gonna, she was I, I think it was stated that she knew she wasn't gonna stay there past yeah she was only yeah. supposed to be there for like a week or something yeah, yeah. and, and then she was supposed to she leave. was supposed to go back to Paris the change was that she ended up going to New York but they knew when she was leaving they knew that she was leaving with son Andine and Sydney were not ignorant to that that she was gonna leave with him before she left I don't, I don't think that they were ignorant of that so I don't think it was a secret. No, not it just, really. It was, they, it was just well, it's it, they knew that they were gone together. I mean, it wasn't mm -hmm. like you know they were they didn't agree with it. And they knew they, they knew Shane took his ass to France. Neither one, <laughs> neither one of them wanted to, because even even Margaret didn't want it to happen, and neither did um, Andine. She didn't want it to happen either. So I mean, but it happened. They left together. So that was that. Hmm. I think I think uh, Son was trying to um, connect Jadine with her blackness. Well, he was trying, but I don't know. Hanging her out the window and slapping her and all the other stuff. <laughs> I don't know if that was going to work. I think that's why he wanted her to go to Elo, too. I think that's why he wanted her to go to Elo, too, as yeah. a way to thrust mm -hmm. her into, because even in New York, like we don't know, we don't get any information about no. the friends that she, you know, whose places she's staying in. But there's an understanding or a thought that this is not to son what he feels black culture is, and I think that's no. why he was kept pushing, kept pushing to get her to Elo because I want to, I want you to see what not necessarily my background is, but what yeah. I see black culture to be. Yeah, but I, I, yeah. I do. I agree with. I agree with you on that. Again, yeah, it would have. It would have been a great companionship. The relationship aspect was just nah. not good. Uh, what he tries to do for her, as far as broadening her horizons and her experience and understanding as a black woman, uh -huh. I think it's good. Yeah, it was good too. The but the relationship the was doomed. Not so much like after that. Yeah. Know, it with, as doomed. With, oh, of course it was doomed. White folk, you ain't going back to no black person. After How can you not think it's doomed? Yeah, They're two so different people. Can somebody at the end of the day. Even though, see, everybody you can can't. change at the end of the day. Oh, yeah. Only, well, only if they want to. Only if they want to. Only only if they want to. The way they want to. It's rare, Mathis. It's rare. It's very rare that people him, actually. He could have made her. He could have made her a better person, and she could have made him a better person. If they, but neither you know, one of them were willing to change. But both of them were on a mission to change. Both of them were on a mission to be themselves. Let's just put mm -hmm. it that way. <laughs> and they and they actually said that in their conversations. We yeah. prior to um son, yeah. you know, telling her go have that white man's baby. Prior yeah. to that. They are. They yeah. have made it a statement, like they're proud of the fact that they're in their relationship, this relationship, and they just accept each other as they are, which we all know is bullshit when it comes to being <laughs> in a relationship with somebody. That they accept each other as they are, and you know, they when they have an issue with something, they work it out. Well, we saw them do that. That yeah, is really well, well, I, don't know, I don't think she knew who she was. Uh, as a person, I don't think she knew who absolutely. she was. She was only 25 years old. I mean, she's only 25 years old in an album. Yeah. Um, but when you say not know what she, she does she know willing, something about she herself. She was willing because, to change to be whose son wanted her but, to be. But basically, one thing she did know was if she wanted anything, she was going to have to work for it. Because quickly, she was like, well, how are you going to get that? You've got to get a job. Otherwise, you're not going to have any money to do what you say you want to do. And he was just sort of like, oh, yeah, okay. I'll, I guess I have to go out and get a job, you know. She's not completely naive. I think she's just, she's just content in the person that she is, no matter how imperfect that really is. Mm -hmm. you yeah, know, she's um, a yeah, smart girl. Yeah, I, I give you that, Dee Dee. Yeah, but, so like, but I'm saying, like, you gotta get it's a job. Got... <laughs> But I mean, but he's quite willing to just do whatever or not do anything. He don't care. I mean, he could probably just sit there and live off of her if he if if she would really let him. You know, but he don't he didn't want to do that. You know, so I, I like think that. they, they were both love and fresh air. 
Yeah, well, yeah, well, no. Sorry. <laughs> that ain't gonna work for me, but you know, I don't know. But um here again, they're both content to be themselves and not change. You know, that you you're talking about it's like two cars going off on two different courses that are ne the, the streets are never going to meet up anywhere because mm -hmm. they just they decided i'm going this way you going that way well we'll see each other when we see each other because they're not prepared to change she's absolutely not prepared to change when she goes down to his little hick town what's it called elo El yeah, or whatever El El whatever it is that that right there is the whole t that's when you really see that nah bro that ain't gonna work it's not gonna work. Right. 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 She was and she there's that scene. There's that scene when she's in Elo and she's waiting for him to come back because he's talking to his dad or something. Mm -hmm. And there she is taking those pictures. Pop, 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 yeah. pop, pop. And then later on, when you see the pictures, she describes them like this is so and so. Stupid. Look at this other picture of this one. <laughs> stupid. And this one. Stupid. And this one. Stupid. <laughs> that was weird. I was like, damn. I was cracking up laughing. I was like, no, that's Toni Morrison is going off here. Like, she, she is just making herself laugh while she's writing this. Mm -hmm. But basically, that's when you, that, that right there was everything. Because it just, everything that happened there. She said, nah, that's never going to work between these two. It's just not going to work. Because she's, she's, they're just different. Yeah, they were different. It's totally different. Stubborn and different. But can I say, that's, what I, that's one of the things that I also liked about this book, about you know how this story went, is that it wasn't them coming together to have this relationship and still being in this relationship when the book was over. And the open, again, we said before, uh, 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 the open ending of it, but them uh -huh. not coming to a resolution yeah. where their relationship was concerned. I kind of, I like that because that's, yeah. it's, it, that's so real. Uh, <laughs> what's your, how did y'all feel about the whole love affair that she had with that, that self coat? <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, no. And I didn't even know bring that up. <laughs> look, look, Mathis. I saw that you wrote that this was some kind of sexual in 90 degrees weather on an island. Crazy mess of that. <laughs> it was who wears stuff like that? Like who wears the silk coat on an island? Parade around. Well, it, it, it. It's a like, gift. You know you go with a gift. gift. Yeah, from her. You, you an know. expensive it's gift. Yes, a very. Mm -hmm. you're, you're going somewhere that's literally hot as hell. Why? Yeah. Fur coat? <laughs> but you know why she takes a fur coat because she likes her luxury. Yeah, that's she why she took that fur coat. Yeah. Exactly. To her aunt and her uncle. That is. Exactly. Look at what, look at what my boo yeah. got me. Yeah, I'm sweating like a mom. Exactly. <laughs> that's exactly right. <laughs> she was fronting with that coat on, girl. Like you wish you could have one too, but my man got me this. And you yeah. know, this type of life. It's kind of like a, not only, the symbolism only, of life in Paris. But not only that, she like was Paris. naked under that coat. Naked now, that whole, under okay, that coat. So can I can I can I share? It went back to that coat. You as, first went to Paris. As a, as a person of a chunkier persuasion, when she gets <laughs> in that coat. And she's naked and she starts talking about where she's sweating. I'm like, no, bitch, you need a whole nother shower. Because <laughs> those areas start sweating against themselves, and that is just not good for your life. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and I'm like, and you won't take it off. So the coat oh. is going to smell like your Lord night. Jesus, you are so, killing me right here. <laughs> This is not good. And then she she takes it off and she gets dressed. And I'm trying to figure out how the hell you get your what what why you need another shower. Oh. <laughs> you you need another I, shower. That part where the thing with the coat, I can kind of understand where she's coming from. I can so, too. Hold on. So in the Philippines, it is is hot. 
but you will see people yeah. wearing clothes. That's, yeah. Like when I was over there, obviously I'm wearing tank tops because it's hot. But there and are your flip flops. Yes, I love flip flops. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And they are wearing like long With socks and coats just because it really will show like they have something. Okay. Mm. Okay. So I can see where she was going from because even though it's hot over there in the Caribbean, I was just like, okay, I could I could see it. I can see so it's she even says maybe Valerian will let me go in into the air conditioned part of his gazebo and I can wear it there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> can, you, 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 just, maybe you, let me you, use you, that you, little air conditioned you, space. You, 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 that's the purpose of the damn coat. So that's what's saying. Look, I'm just saying, like, that's just pure luxury. You know, I mean. She liked the feel of that coat. She did like mm -hmm. the coat. Oh, she liked that coat. She liked the feel of the coat. That great, is, great gift. <laughs> that is quite accurate. Love that coat. Yeah. Uh, and me in my head, all I'm seeing is cartoon think, stink lines. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think that coat represents represents a carefree life in Paris. That's the reason mm -hmm. why she loved that coat so much. That's what I thought. The carefree life and her yeah. also, I agree with you, and her also being on the receiving end of gifts. Everything yeah. she has in life has been a gift. Yeah. You, got, you got gifted with this house that you live in by your aunt, and then and through that gift, you got gifted you got with education. from Valerian and Margaret, and from paid that education. Gift, yeah, yeah. You got you get to go yeah. to France, and from that gift, you get this coat. Everything yeah. she's gotten has been. Yeah, it's like a gift. Given to yeah. Mm-hmm. There's nothing wrong with that. Oh, no, no it's nothing wrong with she just lucky. Her idea of luxury is way up here because mm -hmm. everything that she she hasn't had to work hard for anything. Yeah. That's what's so difficult about this whole son situation uh -huh. with her, is because she actually has there's she has to put work into this and then for this to be the thing that you put work into, that shit didn't work out for you. So, you know, it didn't work you know, out. So oh, it's yeah. like, let me go back to this easiness of Paris. Yeah. yeah. You know, her and son, Jadine and son, they both were broken in some ways because they both were motherless. They both had um, mothers in their lives. Yeah. <laughs> so that was yeah. Um, what, did it say what happened to son's mom? Did she, did, did it? Did I forget that? It doesn't say, but there's this part where they talk about the, the like, after he runs away, after he's killed um, his yeah. wife, there's something about the mother sleeping with a shotgun. I think okay. it's his mother they talk about that she's sleeping with a shotgun and she's she was trying to go after the kid that was that was in the house with, with his wife. And oh, that's okay. Wasn't that his mom? They were talking about how she was kind of cuckoo after that, you know? Uh, she was never the same mm -hmm. um, okay. because of her son having to run away from this crime, you know, that he had done. So, but still, I think you were right, Mathis, when you said they're both broken because they're, they have a rupture with family. Both of them have a rupture with family mm -hmm. um, in a way. So, uh, especially, especially Jardine, she really does have a rupture with family. And then you notice when he goes back to see his dad, their conversation is very, yeah, it's, mm -hmm. it's weird. It's not like what you expect from a son and, and a father. father. They haven't seen each other for years. Yeah, they haven't seen each other for years. Yeah, they and they each other. Like, they first saw each they, other. They each other. Yeah, but like they they talk to each other like what you would talk like to like an acquaintance or something, mm -hmm. you know. It's really weird. And then he, like he doesn't want Jadine to come with him. I I can't bring a woman in my dad's house, and I'm like, you're not going to sleep with her. Mm -hmm. It was really weird. I don't know. Yeah. You can see that there's some kind of weird rupture there with family, even for him. He's so, more but, of he's he more feels. There's more of a familial connection, it seems, between him and what's his name, Soldier. Yeah, Soldier. Yeah, the than, friend that he leaves. Yeah, 
there seems to be something closer there. Now, why is that? I don't know. It's not very oh, since, clear. So since Sonny have, he didn't have a mother to raise him, do you think that's the reason why he was so disrespectful to women? Ah, uh, that's possible. Yeah, that's always possible. Well, the thing is, you do, you do, you know, they, she even said, they, she even said something like, oh, this is like really weird, you know, all the men outside on the porch, all the women inside, but that's very Southern. Yes, it is. It's yes. very Southern because it's like that, it's like that in New Orleans, you know, when we have the dinner, we have like the Thanksgiving and Christmas dinner, the women set the table and the men eat first. Uh huh. The men then finish, and then the women and the kids eat. That's Southern. I don't know what to tell you. So, you know, she's not used to that. She, so she's already feeling like she's on the on the on on the on the on a weird end of the stick. Like she's like, "What are these people?" You know, it, scream, um, it screams outsider. Like, yeah, it's you really know, weird. completely outside, and then to be left in as an outsider with these people. That you don't know. She absolutely does not know. And then she takes stupid pictures of them. With, of <laughs> right. She just takes a lot of stupid pictures of them. And then later on, they just look like stupid it's pictures. Not, he just leaves her there, too. He just leaves her there and goes back to his father's house. And so mm -hmm. she almost had to stand for herself with these people she does not know. And she yeah. just feels like, you know, like a fish out of water. Yeah. So I'm upset with son. <laughs> and, you know, if he I left don't... with these people, I'm like, I don't know these people. What do right. you have to say? I don't um, want to go back to the um, seal skin coat, but Jocelyn mentioned maybe Jadine subconsciously liked the blackness of the seal skin coat next to her skin. LOL. <laughs> she didn't want to admit it. I saw that and it was very hard for me not to start, not to bust out laughing. <laughs> not, in, not in a bad way, Jocelyn. Not, not, in, not in a bad way. They probably like the black skin against her. I don't know. I no you know, um, yeah, I think it was about, not more about, but about the feel of the coat. The coat, that's, yeah. That's one of the things that, like, I've, yeah. I've never actually felt real fur, so I don't know what that luxury feels like. Like, if yeah. I want to feel fur, I want to actually feel it on the animal that it's supposed to be on, but, you know, I could die. So that's not good. But, <laughs> I've never felt because once the fur is taken off the air, it goes through a treatment process. So it's yeah. not the same feeling as if it were on night Denise, if as if it were on the the actual the animal in you know yeah. in life. It's I, I would think it's much plusher, much uh, more plush because uh, of the treatment process that it goes through. Yeah. I, 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 I mean, but... she was just feeling that coat, honey. Yeah, she was just feeling it. She was feeling <laughs> it. Just feeling she was it. Feeling it hard. Yeah. Look what I have. Y'all don't have this. She was feeling that luxury all the way. Yeah. Jadine, she reminds me of Sula. <laughs> she has this self centered attitude. And she, you know, she comes back home oh. thinking she's better than everybody. She's very Sula ish. Uh, I get that. I, I I don't think I don't think it's that she just thinks she's better than everybody. I think she's been led to believe because believe it, yeah, because of what the luxuries that she's been afforded through her. You know, she's family. educated. Yeah, Same with she was educated. You know, she came back home thinking everybody should buy down to her. Yeah, I can you see know. that. Um, I after reading. Tarbay and then go straight to Sula. Uh, You're gonna make I, me reread this. Yeah, so, I'm gonna have to. Me, they're, they're very different. Yeah. To me, they're very different. I mm. I felt as though like Jadine, like her character was different than Sula. In the Sula's sense, more like, brash than Jadine, isn't she? Yeah, I think I so. I can see that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so, more so brash is a bit more brash and in your face. And yeah, I don't give up, you know, a bit then yeah. Yeah. and plus like she been she she been through things. Mm -hmm. Who been through yeah. things? Sula. 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 <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she she had life experiences that mm. that shaped her that Jadine. 
don't know nothing about. Yeah. Yeah. Because, because if you were to compare it, you could almost see what was Tula's friend's name? God dang it. I can't I can't even think of her name right now. Nope. <laughs> nope. Not here. Nell. I can't remember. Nell. Yeah. yeah. Nell, um, I would say Nell. Well, I don't know. No, they're all different. They're all different. <laughs> they're all different. I was just well, I'm gonna have to read. I'm gonna have to read it again, Sula, because it's been a minute since I read that book. Yeah, yeah I, was, I don't think a, a good I remember Sula being very nasty. She was like sleeping with her best friend husband. I remember that scene in the book, and she didn't give a fuck about sleeping with her best friend husband. And so, mm. she had like a careless attitude, like you know, she didn't care about uh, people, the people around her. Yeah. Mm. And I feel like yeah. Jadine feels. I feel like Jadine is the same way. She really don't care about the she's people. She's selfish, around. but it's a, it's, it's a, it's in a different it's way. It's a different kind of being. It's a yeah. different kind of selfish. Yeah. Because because Jadine, I think is she's she's selfish, but she 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 doesn't realize it, <laughs> and she hasn't really lived anything seriously horrible. Mm-hmm. Not really. So she's kind of like oblivious. Mm-hmm. Yeah, How do y'all really feel cool. about Jadi being in an interracial relationship with a white guy in Paris? Nothing. I don't, I don't I feel, feel anything I about that. I mean, about she could be with a black guy that was rich in Paris. She could be with a Chinese one in Paris. I yeah. think as long as he had the money and was giving her gifts like that lovely fur coat that she loved I, so much and she was feeling, she'd be fine with it. I, I don't think she really cares. Interracial relationship between her and her man in Paris. Like, but some people might think like think like sons. Some people are look at her like as a sellout, you know, because she's like, okay, why are you not with your brothers? Well, why why you gotta run off of a white man? You know, you gonna take care of you and all this jazz about the whole, you know, white, you know, white is better. That's, but yeah, I think, that's I think she was attracted to whoever she was attracted to. Yeah, I think she's just attracted to whoever is gonna give her the things that she so called wants. Mm-hmm. Um, and if she could have gotten that son, she'd have stayed with son. She would have stayed with son. See, frankly speaking, I think she's very oblivious to race. Um, really, like she walks around maybe, and people assume that she thinks that she's better than them. That may not necessarily be the case, mm-hmm. but that's the way she comes off. She because she she's she. She is like that person who is raised to believe that they are great. Mm-hmm. She believes it. That she's beautiful. beautiful. She's beautiful. you know got everything, yeah. and she, like she knows you. it. But it it's not that she necessarily thinks that other people are not as good as her. She just knows what she's good at, mm-hmm. kind of thing. So that makes her oblivious to race. That's probably a really bad thing, though. You know, that she's completely oblivious because, you know, I mean, with everything that goes on, how could she be oblivious? That's why she got into trouble in the supermarket with them eggs. I believe she does think white is better. Like, the white is, you know, supreme. Is is It's possible that she thinks it's... Thinks that. But we don't know that because we don't have any, we don't have anything to go on to really, really believe that. That's just how the story is set up to believe that, you know, because, because Sun is not happy with the fact that she's with, that she was with this white man. And I think this is also, she's been sponsored by Valerian. Well, this is the thing, but this is also, this is also a very common idea amongst black people about black women being with white men and black men being with white women is that in, in the black community, people are not happy with that. You know, yeah, so she's put that in there to th- to throw in some of the you know the uh, you know the, the common um, ideas that we have in the black community about interracial relationships. So, mm-hmm. um, but I don't necessarily think that she equates white with right because mm-hmm. we don't really hear her say that. Yeah. But she could almost believe that maybe she could think that, but we don't know because she went I with son. Think that because the way she treated her, uh, her, her aunt and her uncle, she may seem like that she they were beneath her because they were servants and perhaps they looked 
a certain way. Perhaps we're. I don't. Need, I don't even. I don't think it, that it has that, to do with them. But I think it's more is that. Yeah, it's that. It's, that she also the connection position that they placed her in when she yeah. came into that house as a child because she didn't come into that house as the uh, now new charge of yeah. Dean and Sydney. She no. came into that house as a child who's living with Valerian and Margaret. Valerian and Margaret. Not, she doesn't live in the cellar with, no. uh, with Sydney and Andine. With, she lives Andine. on the second floor or the third floor yeah. with yeah. Valerian and Margaret. So I yeah. don't think that has, I think that is, and again, you know, yeah. to the conversation that Andine has with her about, it's time for you to help me. It, it's yeah. that you know, she doesn't, I don't think it has to do with their color. I just think it has to do with her not being. Her station. Mm. Yeah. And not, and not being shown that we're your family. Yeah. Not Valerian and Margaret. She treats Valerian and Margaret more like their family because of the relationship that she was able to forge with them living in the big house with them. In the big house on the right floor. Right. Because <laughs> she's on the bottom floor. floor. So mm -hmm. that's kind of the fault of Andine and and and, mm -hmm. uh, and Sydney has, in a way. She has nighttime conversations with Margaret. Both she and Margaret yeah. have problems yeah. sleeping, and so they yeah. sit up at night and will have nighttime conversations yeah. with her. Sydney and Andine are downstairs working. She only goes into the kitchen with them when she's looking for something to eat. Eat. Mm -hmm. exactly. So you remember the part where Margaret was trying to ask uh, Jadine, like, "Hey, we're going to do about this the son in our house. You know, he could rape us." Mm -hmm. And you know, he was and Janine was like, What about Ardeen? We should all leave. And she was like, Ardeen, we think he, she, he, he wants to rape her. You know, it's like, What's that all about? I think Margaret because Margaret thinks Ardeen, Margaret sees Ardeen as being 20 or more years older, yes, older and she's she does not. not realize that Ardeen is two years older than her. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, I remember two that. Years yeah. Older yeah. Than her. yeah. She doesn't yeah. see Ardeen as being. In the same vein Lead. as her age wise yeah. or attractiveness wise. Yeah. So the idea that, you know, like she and Margaret can be raped because Margaret knows that she's pretty. Jadine yeah. can be raped because Jadine is young and pretty, but Andine is yeah. old and ugly. Old and, and ugly. Like, how how could she be thinking that that man was going to rape right, her? So why would he right. want to rape her? Hmm. Yeah. And, like, yeah, so that that has to oh, okay. came off. It may seem like she was subhuman or something. Oh, no, like, well, that's well, well, that's that's the the race class thing, you know. Yeah. I mean, that's that's the that's the double whammy right there. The race the and the class system. thing, you know. Uh, oh, I'm a white woman. I could get molested. I could get I, I could get raped because I'm the beautiful white old white woman, you know. Like, as far as I'm concerned, he probably wouldn't even think about raping her. But you know, <laughs> right? She's thinking in and her that, mind that that's, that's going to happen. That's what he told her, he said, "I don't want. I ain't thinking." But well, that's what Son told Jadine. I ain't yeah. raping you. Why will all you white women think that? <laughs> exactly. But you see <laughs> that? Like, I ain't white. <laughs> yeah, but you see that's Toni Morrison again, put, pumping in the story those stereotypes mm -hmm. that we. Mm -hmm. You know, she's pumping it again with those stereotypes that we're used to hearing. And you know, this idea that black men are predators are going to rape all these white women, you know, kind of thing. And the so, only black man on the island is Valerian. I mean, the only white man on the island. Oh, yeah, because the, the doctor is what? He's Dominican or something? Yeah. Uh, or Spanish. He's, Spanish. He's, he's lighter. He's lighter than black. But <laughs> yeah, well, I think he's supposed to be Spanish or something like that. Yeah, but the the only white man on the island is, is Valerian. Black. Well, then you see, there you go. I mean, that's why he thinks. And there was even one part where they said uh, something about all black people looking alike. What does she think all black people look alike? I think it's um, something that Margaret says. Somebody said something about Margaret thinking. That all black people look alike, or something like that. I, I don't remember. Let me see that. if I can find it. Um, let me see. I think I might have written that one down. Mm. Oh, jeez.
Dee Dee, is it three o'clock over there? It's three forty. Oh my shite. Oh. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> oh, don't be too shocked. <laughs> Tomorrow I mean, Sunday. Not shot, but I didn't realize that it was after nine o'clock. Uh, yeah, already. Jeez, I don't remember where it is. I might have um, marked it. Um, what are some things you didn't like about the book? Because my main issue with it was the last after the dinner scene. I felt like it wasn't. It wasn't as great as the first two thirds. Like mm-hmm. it didn't feel like it. Maybe it would have been better if she like fleshed it out a little bit. Once we left the island, yeah, that's with I with, think that J- with Jadina's son. I I I mean I didn't enjoy. I yeah. I understood I the, what you mean. like the purpose of it to give more of yeah. their characters, but I so, did not yeah. enjoy that dynamic as much as I did while we were on the island. I was very happy to go back. It's, to the it's true. The island gives a certain sense of tension that that mm-hmm. gives the story um, a lot of, um, you know, a lot of. Um, it's like the build up. To oh, it. Yeah. yeah, it gives a good build up, and then when you leave the island, she does that. It's, she does it to give the, the to give more scope to the characters, especially to Jardine and and Son. But it's true, the uh, flow is not as good, maybe mm-hmm. um, as the beginning when they're on the island. The island is just perfect to add all that tension that makes the story really interesting because it's almost like you know it's almost like those you know those kind of stories where you have the who done it and you have all 12 people in the I, same room. I was thinking about the exact same It's the same story. kind of idea. It's almost like a typical idea like like an Agatha Christie or something where you have all the people in the room and Hercule Poirot says, "Ah, oh, yeah, you know, he starts questioning people and he's trying to figure out who the murderer is." Was well, the same tension in the beginning and it works really really well. Mostly because of the excellent dialogue between mm-hmm. the different characters. It's the dialogue is everything in this. I mean, like, I think if, you, if you're learning how to write a book, this would be a really good book to study in depth to understand more how to write dialogue. Yeah. Because the dialogue is, um, it, feels, really it feels real and it, you, it, you can discover more things about the characters oh, through the things that they say yes. in the dialogue. So it's not like they have to say, oh, so-and-so said this and he did that. It's in the dialogue. It just, it just is. And that's, I think that's why the arguments are one of our, you know, my, one of my favorite things about this whole story is all of the arguments, the arguments between Valerian and Margaret, between Sydney and mm. Odin. Sydney mm. and Valerian, Son and Jadine, all of the arguments, that's what most of these tabs <laughs> are arguments because it reveals so much about the people and it also put me in the mindset of dealing with cantankerous old people, which I have had plenty of experience doing. And just like one of the things I used to love to do with my granddad, it was just uh, annoy him so that he would just start fussing and I would like end up laughing. I used to piss him off. But... <laughs> The the whole the argument of it because you see you see the real person. Mm. I wish I could find that. that I wish you could. My least favorite part in the book was the ending. I feel like it it, it left the story like open. You want it, you want it good closer. way. Not in a good way. I, I still wanted to find out what happened to the characters. Mm-hmm. So I, I feel like. It's, I, I kind of feel like Tony Moore is kind of throwing a towel at the end. Because I feel like, Why? I just didn't feel like it was, I feel like something he, didn't come to a resolution. Yeah, he, he wanted more closure. Like, what we, we kind of like the openness. Of I like the that. Ending. But I he, like it too. Because it gives an island feel to it. I can understand that. It gives you that Caribbean feel to it. Um, with this, um, Kind of, uh, I guess you could say it's magical realism type mm-hmm. ending. Um, I 
Oh yeah. Okay. That was the part where, um, Jadine, um, was holding back Margaret when, um, uh, when Margaret was yelling at, um, Andine, because Andine was calling her a baby killer. <laughs> that, that, that scene was, oof, that was rough. That was, that was a lot. That, that was, was rough. A lot. Um, I want to say there's... I read that twice too because I just could. I was like, "Whoa!" Like this didn't fall apart nicely. It's like you were on a two-story building and you took a penny and you didn't just drop it. You just you threw that shit. <laughs> okay, I think I found it. It's um, oh, I can't even remember exactly what part this is. There's a part where it says, and instead of protecting her or at least getting upset, he invites the very thing that scared the shit out of her to dinner mm -hmm. and lets him sleep down the hall from us all. Doesn't he know the difference between one black and another, or does he think we're all dot, That's dot, dot? Yeah. Some, yeah. Mess th some mess this is. Yeah. Who said that that was, that was Jadine Ordain? Ordain. I remember that scene. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. So that was, that that's was yeah. And again, that's classism. the classism thing. Yeah, yeah. classism. Yeah. Mm -hmm. thing, yeah. Like, you know, everybody think they have their own position. Mm. You know, they're like, okay, I'm better than you. Mm -hmm. you, know? you know your place, you know? So it was whole, the, the whole classism thing. Yep. Yeah, that that was that, one. that was that one stuck out to me. I was like, okay, <laughs> that is, this, is, this is why you reread books because there yeah. are things like even if you think you get everything, there's always something that you miss, and I forgot about that. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, there's a couple of um, uh, some some really good ones. Um, Yeah, that's the seal part. Um, Jocelyn asked, um, do you think, while well, you're looking, Didi, uh, yeah. Jocelyn asked, do you think Sydney would have really shot Sun if he made it back to them to find Jadine? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I think he would have shot him because he was if Sid, off. I think if Sydney knew that Sun had been creeping in Jadine's room while she was sleeping at night, I think if he knew, if he, he figured out or found yeah. out, he would have killed him then. Yeah, I think so too. Because he was pretty adamant about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's when she says he says, um, Jardine stepped away from the window so Yardman shouldn't see her nakedness, wondering what he would think of the black man in the guest room. She went to the bed where the skins of the ninety mm -hmm. baby seals sprawled. 90 baby seals. She lay on top of them and ran her fingertips through the fur. How black, how shiny, smooth. She pressed her thighs deep into its dark luxury. Then she lifted herself up a little and let her nipples brush the, the black hairs back and forth, back and forth. It had frightened Andine the coat. She spoke as though the marriage was all, was all right, but Jardine knew Andine would be heart sick. So yeah, that's the, the the baby seal coat business. It's still um, it's pretty intense that coat scene. Yeah, this <laughs> is pretty intense. Uh, it was hot, literally, not figuratively. Mm -hmm. And why does Valerian think that Margaret's a drunk? Because she probably drinks in secret. But there's no, there's no indication. That I didn't she, know. It's, it's her, it's, it's her, the, the early onset, what I think is early onset dementia. Yeah. But he, he never attributes it or thinks about the fact that it might be something that's wrong. Yeah. As opposed to something that she's doing to herself. Yeah. But you missed what she was doing to your kid. Yeah, exactly. Well, then you can pretty much say clearly he's clueless. He doesn't see anything. He's yeah. a little bit like uh, he's oblivious. He's aloof. Because like here, this is the scene. He says, 
when he was just a little thing, I came home one day and went into the bathroom. I was standing there and I heard this humming, singing coming from somewhere in the room. I looked around and then I found it in the cabinet under the sink. He was crouched in there singing. That was the first time, but not the last. Every now and then I'd come home and he'd be under the, under the sink, humming to himself. When I'd pull him out, ask him what he was doing there, he'd say he liked the soft. He was and two. you never saw a scar? You never two saw Two years scar. old, okay? I think, I think two years old, so he don't even know, okay? Looking in the dark for something soft. Now imagine how many soft, cuddly things he had in his room. Bunny rabbits, slippers, panda bears. I used to try to be it for him, but I wasn't there during the day. She was, though. I sometimes had the feeling that she didn't talk to him very much. Then it would go away. The feeling, I mean. She'd change. She, she'd get interested in him, read to him. Take him to shows, parks. Months would pass. Then I'd come home and he'd be under the sink again, humming that little, that little, I can't tell you how lonely, lonely mm -hmm. song. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you see here he says, then she'd lose interest again. When he was 12, he went to boarding school and things were better until he came to visit. She would do things, odd things to get his attention and keep it. Anything to keep his eyes on her. She'd make up things, threats to herself, attacks, insults, anything to see him fly into a rage and show how willing he was to defend her. I watched and tried to play it down or prove Proved she was making it up. I always checked it was always nothing. All I ended up doing was making him angry with me. I thought another child, but she, I thought another child, but she said no. Absolutely refused. I have, I have until this day never understood that. Thank God she said. So you see, that's in the very beginning. That's, that's when you kind of have an inkling that there might be something like abuse going on. Mm -hmm. You know, um, that's when you, sh that's when you, I think she wants you to think there could be some abuse going on because I mean, even when he's older, she's still trying to get his undivided attention by doing crazy stuff, which is kind of weird because I mean, what could you do to a 12 year old, you know, to she try said, to get their attention stop cutting him because he got too big. Exactly. Cause she was afraid he would do it to her. Mm -hmm. mm. Well, what's so, her? Valerian was the alcoholic, wasn't he the one that was drinking all the time? When did he drink the most? I don't think, no, I don't think he drank. I don't think he drank. There was maybe one or one yeah, scene where they were drinking. Yeah, he had drink or two, but I don't yeah. think he drank. Okay. Yeah, because he, he said something about when they put that uh, stuff in his coffee. And he said something about the doctor said, which is so real. The doctor saying that all he needed to have was like something like a, like some whiskey or something once a day. And that, you know, and that's, that was, that was okay. Or am I making that up? Cause my granddaddy legit said that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, when, it, when he tells uh, Sydney to tell Andine to stop putting that stuff in his, in his drink. Yeah, you see, here you go. This is the thing that tells you Margaret's state of mind. It says, Margaret was not dreaming, nor was she quite asleep, although the moon looking at her face believed she was. She was experiencing the thing insomniac's dread, not being awake, but the ticky-tacky thoughts that fill in the space where sleep ought to be. Mm -hmm. Rags and swatches, drain cloths and crumpled paper napkins, old griefs and embarrassments, jealousies and offense. Just common in Yobla, scraps not deep enough for dreaming and not light enough to dismiss. Yet she was hopeful that sleep would come, that she would have the dream she ought to, for maybe that would dis dispel the occasional forgetfulness that plagued her when she forgot the names and uses of things. So that, that's like pretty much tells you the you know, the, the state that she's in 
at the very beginning of the novel that she's on her way to full blown Alzheimer's eventually. Mm-hmm. Mm. Anything else? We... No, I think that's all. I mean, unless you guys want to say anything else, we can wrap it up. No, as you know, y'all went through all the topics. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I really liked to. I liked reading this book a second time. I, you know, I, I was reliving some things. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was good rereading it. I mean, I, like I said, I need to get on and re reread Sula, you know, next month maybe because yeah. oh, I I really understand your meaning of rereading, especially with Morrison, because I reread The Bluest Eye again just in January, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. I got I got a lot, so much more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got a lot. Yeah, from yeah. Oh, uh, it's yeah. you know, it's it's made to be. I think to be able to read you know, many times in your life, if you can, because I think you can get something new every time. Um, that's why I'm kind of anxious to read, um, reread Beloved as well. Mm-hmm. Cause it's been and a I minute. need to try Beloved, <laughs> I need to try Beloved again. I tried reading it in college and I don't think I was in the mental space. Space. I'm excited the time for when it. I tried to, when I tried well, to you do it. need to be in mental space cause it is hard. Mm-hmm. I'm excited. That's it's hard. After, <laughs> it's after. It's after book harsh. of Solomon. So it's, it's very harsh. Book of Solomon. Yeah, the next one. Song of Solomon is really good. Book of I probably Solomon should reread that too. Book. I should probably just go back and reread all of the really old ones because those are the ones that I like the most. The new ones are just like me. Me. And that's the consensus of a lot of people who have read. Through her her bibliography through the years, as the books have come out, they feel yeah. the same way. So I mean, I, I liked think, home. I think, Michael, you, home is good. Starting and just starting over, and even rereading the books that you've already read, and going from her bibliography bibliography from book one to current mm. is probably what, what a good um, what all of us who want to read her uh, would benefit from doing, even if you've read them out of order, like I have, because yeah. I've, I've read Sula mm. already, and now I'm just getting the Tar Baby, but I think it might be good when I start, you know, when I get into reading her, to read the Blue and Sky, and then read them in order, oh, absolutely. and re- reading Tar Baby and Sula. Definitely read the Blue and Sky, because that one is just, it's amazing. I know, that's it. Yeah. So the first time I asked you about that, I, the oh. way you said it, I was like, okay, so she's serious. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. And it's also, amazing. Like, rereading it, rereading it, knowing what the what actually happened. It's, yeah, it's, it's even amazing. harder because then when you it's harsh, it, but it's amazing. When, yeah, when you get Pacola's point of view, it's it's hard. It's, it's heartbreaking. Yeah, it's it a heartbreaking, heartbreaking story. But then that's the same problem with um. That's what the problem with Beloved. It's heartbreaking as well. It's. Oh, I never God, watched so the movie, terrible. Justin, so I haven't. I refuse to watch. And I haven't even seen the movie. Same here, Tatiana. I refuse to watch the movie. Tell me. Until I read the book. Ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> We're not gonna watch that. We're just gonna read the book again. You know, <laughs> the book is always better than the movie. Better than the movie. I agree. Yeah. Happens. Yeah. Joc- Jocelyn made a comment that Beloved should have never been made into a movie. No, it probably Look, never. You should. know, sometimes, and this is a whole other you know a tangential statement but sometimes and uh, you know she's great and everything but sometimes I think movies get made because Oprah wants them to be made <laughs> yeah and when you I got think, money you I'm gonna agree money. with you on that one when, when you got that's money so you can true. do that but uh yeah I, I think that's what happened with Beloved it's not always the best thing though yeah yeah because that's like a big that that book is just that's the kind of thing you don't want to touch because you could mess it up on screen. Mm-hmm. It's because most people, even if they've not read, I said they've only read one or two books by Toni Morrison, Beloved is one of them. I mean, it's the book that most people have read from her. And most people, when they read it, they're like, it broke me. It was tragic. You know, it was, you know, they're completely moved by it. <laughs> oh, you, yeah, you're going to be broken, girl. <laughs> Look, that was the book I had suggested for this for, the, for February was Beloved. Oh my and God. when I was on the live, the Insta live, everybody's like, ah, no, oh no, <laughs> Ooh, no, I won't do it. She's no, it was too depressing. That one. By the time Everybody was crying and stuff. I was like, okay. 
enough already. No beloved. Okay, let's go with Tar Baby. Okay, that's good. You know, people went Googled, you know, Tar Baby and everything. Oh, yeah, okay, we could do that. You know, <laughs> so nobody wanted to do beloved. They were all like, no, no. <laughs> Oversaturation. I mean, no, it's some people that's like, they didn't want to read it because they heard it was hard. Some people didn't want to read it because they said it was depressing. Um, and then you had people that had already read it. Necessarily easy and uplifting. So I mean, no, but beloved is much worse. Let's be, put it that way. Is worse than that. Yeah, it's much worse. Actually, I it's found, much found Tar Baby not as deep in. I, I thought it actually was durable. The characters are very fresh and vibrant. It's not as yeah. It's not as intense as the love. Surprisingly, I'm ready for it. I'm ready for it. I love it's, the It's not nearly as intense. You can as talk about the food in here, guys. Food yes. is in here. I mean, you talk about baking. Like, yes, yeah, like, true. Uh, it's true. Beans and you know they talk yeah. about eating mangoes in the morning. Okay. Yeah. So I was it's just, not oh, nearly as intense. Oh, okay, that was that was my first. In, like inclination that I wasn't going to care that much for Margaret because she was so offended by the damn mango and I was like bitch that's the best food on the island exactly tell me about it <laughs> give me a mango on this island, island. <laughs> oh. who no, should we no, eat on this no, island she apples from America she was mad I don't think she was mad about the mango she was mad about the pineapple yeah, it's the pineapple. Yeah. yeah. I don't like pineapples either. I find them too. Oh, no. I love pineapple. That's my favorite. I love, I love pineapple. pineapple. I will eat yeah, I love pineapple. I love pineapple. It's, I love pineapple. Yeah, pineapple. she was not having the pineapples, Margaret. She was like, yeah. Fresh pineapple is delicious. Yeah, it's, I love it. Oh, there in the Philippines, there are... There's like I was, you know, field. Michael. I was getting ready to say, if I ever get to the point the, where I am, get over my fear of flying to take the long ass flight to go to the Philippines. All oh. I want to eat is fruit. I want bananas. Oh. I want mangoes. I want pineapples. I want jackfruit. I, all I want is fruit. <laughs> you, the only fruit. Have you ever, um, have you ever had Dorian? Yeah, that's the one that smells. Uh, two days ago. You're probably not gonna like it, Tati. I will, I will risk it. I just, it really I, does. I it's, no. it's, no. it's, it's in a yeah, quiet it's for, you, it's for her to experience. Yeah, you know? Yeah. I, I, you never know. know. You never know. These things. And like the mangoes look different in the Philippines than what we get here. Like they're yeah. deeper. Mm. It's a richer color. And yeah. Like, it, there's, the, there's like varieties of mangoes. And because like uh. where I live, they're, they're different from what you get here at the grocery store. Uh. But you can find it at like the Korean store, if you ever go to one, or like an Asian, but it's gotta make it. It's gotta make it all the way here. It's just, oh, uh, it's it's just it's. And I, I mean, I can only go by what I know because that's you know I've only had mango. Well, that's a lot. I had mango, um, fresh mango in the Bahamas, but <laughs> it's just it's Wait. just something. It's it, I don't know. It's the I just so you flew I to, to the, the Bahamas. Oh, did you fly to the Bahamas? Hell no. Oh. <laughs> I took a boat. <laughs> I want a cruise. <laughs> Oh, you went on a cruise. Yeah, See, and I don't I, like boats. Like my, my, I'm not a boat person. Where flying is, I have to fly when I um, I'm taking a vacation over the summer, and I have to fly for that vacation. And um, just like my my level of anxiety, I try not to think about it because my anxiety. But where are you going? Already. Just we have to fly to Florida because we're doing a cruise. But that's not that bad. That's what a couple hours on the plane. Getting, it's not that it's not that bad. It has absolutely nothing to be about about it bad. It's the I can't if this if something happens on this plane, I can't fix it. Oh my god. <laughs> so Girl, nothing is gonna happen on that plane. It's the it's the lack of control. It's the You'd have more of a chance of having an accident in a car than in that plane. Okay, Daddy. That's what my dad used to tell me when I was a kid. Well, it's the truth. <laughs> Cause I, I stopped like I used to fly all the time when I was little. Um, and then I just, the Pan Am started falling out the sky and I started seeing that shit on the news. And so I was like, oh, no, no, Daddy, you can drive me home this time. You know what? You I, I, I the watch the news today. Um, you know, I think in Virginia, the, the winds were so high, they was pushing a plane from landing. You, did you see that today? I, oh. I don't know. I didn't know. That was scary. Do you know where I live? We, we, where? I live in Virginia. Oh, so that <laughs> <laughs> oh, so when I saw that on the news today, when, when the winds were pushing the plant off the. Like, yeah, when you said it, I was like, does he know that I live in 
never. No, I never. <laughs> I actually freaked you out today if you saw, you know, you seen that yes. today. That freaked me out this I live, morning. I live in Virginia and I don't live far from an airport. And the fact that I have not heard a lot of planes landing today is like, it's kind of freaking me out. Cause I, cause you can hear them coming when they, uh, uh -huh. uh, but yeah, I, I'm not surprised. Yesterday, the gusts were so bad that a part of um, my neighbor's roof is now lifted. Like she's going to have to get somebody out there to fix it. The winds were so bad. It was horrible. It was horrible. Yeah. It I saw was that horrible. It was so horrible. That's a scary situation to be on a plane and the wind is pushing the plane in the my air. Is now yes. Crazy. Because all it is is turbulence. That That's all. It's, it's, oh, yeah. 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 I was in it. I experienced it. And you could feel you could feel it like in your car when you were drive when driving if you you could feel the wind coming under your car. Oh wow! Yeah, mm -hmm. that's crazy. really bad. All right, well we're gonna wrap it up. So, yes. Thanks everybody, everybody for yes, joining yes, in, like tuning in, and for participating in the discussion. Participating in the discussion. I hope it helps people understand better. And yeah, so that's it. Stay on, stay on, don't move. Okay.